Uh, we do have one business before the council uh, goes into deliberation on the budget. Uh, we do need to call the special council meeting to order. So Jackie, could you call the roll, please? Patty? Yeah. Here. 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 We have a quorum. Thank you, everyone. The first thing on the agenda, and of course, remember, on the on a special council meeting, nothing can be added to the agenda. I believe we just have a couple different things. Uh, the first is the Jason, help me out. Do we want to reconsider the bid? What's the appropriate uh, motion? I don't think reconsideration is appropriate. I think you want to clarify the award. Okay, very good. Let's go to, uh, and if you hadn't got the notes yet, uh, there was a mistake made at uh, last uh, Monday's night's uh, council meeting. We did not award the appropriate bid on the lawnmower. Uh, it, we awarded it to RDO after we went through that whole exercise. I'm going to let Jerry Cole explain that there should be a memo with the Parks and Rec's uh, uh, logo on the top left-hand corner. Mr. Cole. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize to the mayor and city council tonight for um, what we have to go through to uh, complete this. The recommendation um, from the Parks and Recreation is to award to the Midwest Turf and Irrigation at $46,910. The low bid of $44,053 uh, from Midwest Turf did not meet specifications because it was a demo and last year's model. And we bid out a new this year's model. The second, the RDO equipment did not meet specifications um, because of the deck mowing width, the reversible cooling fan uh, didn't have one, and the bi-directional wing protection units that didn't come with that either. So. Uh, because of that, the low bid that meets is the Midwest Turf and Irrigation, $46,910. The chair look for a motion to, thank you. We have a motion and a second to accept the bid from Midwest Turf and Irrigation for the amount of $46,910. Jason, let's go to Jason. Thank you, Mayor. Just for clarification, this is the award to the lowest responsible bidder meeting um, specifications. And that's the reason this item is back tonight for Monday. Okay, very good. Everyone, we did have a second, correct? Thank you. And just for uh, uh, the council's information, uh, the Parks Department did contact RDO and explain what happened here. So there's, this is not coming as a surprise to them. Very good. Any discussion on that motion? I don't see any lights. I was kidding. Yes. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And with that, uh, my role is done, and I'll turn the meeting over to the Council President, Deb Hadcock. Um, council, if it's okay with you, we're going to start with, with the Council Budget Work Session. We're going to start with the CPI um, discussion. That was some of the suggestion of some of the Council members, and I appreciate suggestions from people. Um, if we could stick to the CPI discussion first and then move on to the mayor's budget and then the unfunded, which would be the priority list, um, that would hopefully be our direction tonight. Um, but if anybody has questions on the CPI, um, this is the time to ask. Pauline is here. There is a paper that explains CPI, but if we need a, a little bit more um, discussion or definition, we do have a um, easel up front um, if anybody needs her to, Ms. Pauline, to explain it a little more or have any discussion about how we do the CPI. Councilman Ogrebke. Thank you very much. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, this CPI that we're considering right now, what does that mean for a typical homeowner? What is that, if we take the CPI, what's that going to increase a typical homeowner? Go ahead, Pauline. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the memo on the second page of that email, I did a calculation on a home that is valued at $150,000, and that would be the equalized value with a one. Wait, 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 wait. Where you're saying? On the second 
There's a lot of second pages. Second page of this one. That okay. one's, it's going to be, I printed it off. It'll be an email from Jim Preston to Deb, the counts group, Mayor Hanks, and myself. And on the back side, there is a stapled sheet where it has a projection for the 2009 budget with CPI and without CPI. On a $150,000 home, the annual effect would be $12.86, which would be approximately $107 per month. Correct. Ms. Ocraft, Thank you. Ocrafty, sorry. Uh, so what does that mean for businesses? Depending on what their business is worth for every $150,000 of equalized value, it will be another $12.86 per year. So if your business building is valued at $300,000, it would be about $25.60 a year. So there's no difference between residential and commercial buildings for, for uh, uh, property taxes? There is a difference between owner-occupied and non-owner-occupied, and obviously a business would be a non-owner-occupied. When Before Jim went on vacation, we sat down and looked at what the percent of the overall um, mill levy, what the city's portion is versus everyone else's. The city has about 17.3% of the total mill belongs to the city. When I looked at this, I did not take that into consideration at all. I looked at uh, what the the tax bill would be for the home based, and it was an owner-occupied home. The total mill on an owner-occupied home is about $17, and on a non-owner-occupied status, it's about $22. So it just, I would have to sit down and recalculate it, but it's still the average is about 17.3% of the total mill levy. Thank you, not, not to be too argumentative, but I thought there was a significant difference in percentage, like three or four percent between uh, commercial and residential. As we talked about these kinds of things in the past, I remember that you know, we talked about TIFs and 67% <clears throat> goes to uh, school districts, 22% uh, goes to the county, and somehow it gets worked out. The remainder goes to us or something like that. So I was just kind of curious. If you'd like, I do have some information down in my office with what the mill levy is broken up on a non-owner occupied home as well. Mr. Okrepke, would you want that information at this time? Uh, no, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Hanks, please. Oops, thank you. I think I might be able to, typically there, there's a difference between the actual mill levy and how the property tax dollars split up. You're exactly right. The, the schools get about two thirds. County gets a little over 20, 21, 22, 23 percent based on the year. The city will get anywhere from about 11 to 13 percent, and there's usually typically one percent somewhere floating for special assessments and so forth. On a typical owner occupied home, and, and there again, keep in mind this is a generalized statement because it, it floats based upon mill levy and also the property tax base throughout the, not only throughout the Rapid City, but throughout the county. On a typical home, you're going to pay somewhere between 18 and uh, $19 uh, per thousand. In other words, you have a $100,000 home, your property tax bill should be roughly about $2,000. Now there again, that's, that's very rough, and I mean that's very rough. On a commercial property, it would be close to $3,000 per, per $100,000. That's typically what I've always used is if you have a residential home that's owner-occupied, uh, whatever your value is, if it's $100,000, you're going to pay $2,000. If it's commercial, you'll pay $3,000. Thank you, Matt. I hope Alan. that helps. Um, yes. Thank you, Mayor. But so this increase, is it still a dollar? Yes. A month? Le less than a dollar a month, if I'm not mistaken. Or is, what would you figure it was on a, did you do it on a $150 or $100,000 home? Or $50. $150. My understanding, for every $100,000 worth of value on your home, it's about $0.80 cents or $0.82. Cents. Probably a little less than that. A little less than that. So if you break it down easier, think of $100,000 worth of value. That what you're going to pay is about nine dollars and sixty cents a year more if you take the CPI on a hundred thousand dollar home, so about eighty cents a month. Now there again, this is where it gets difficult. 
it all depends on whether or not the tax base grows and the mill levy goes down. So in theory, and there again, we, we have no idea what it's going to look like in 2009, but in theory, even though we may take the CPI, the dollar amount, the amount of taxes that are basically directed to the city per 100,000 may actually go down if we have enough growth within the base and driving the mill levy down. And so it, it, what the dollar amounts that you're getting is if all things remain constant on a $100,000 house, uh, the base doesn't expand and the assessed value doesn't go up. Uh, basically what you're talking about is about $80 or 80 cents per month if you take the CPI for a $100,000 home. If you have a $200,000 home, it'd be $1.60 per month. I think that's where you're going with Pauline. Mr. O'Krapke, could you have a follow-up? Thank follow you. Up? So you can't, uh, so you just can't take this $2,000 2, and tack on another 3% and see what you got? Well, no. Nope. Keep, there again, keep, keep it. That, and it, and it, it, <laughs> yes, it is. And, and the reason is, is there again, keep in mind is, we don't automatically add 3% to the property tax bill. It's a floating number based upon what the assessed value is versus uh, what the mill levy is and the, and the base. And so I will tell you uh, that if you go back and historically look, the mill levy has been going down every single year in Rapid City because our base is growing. And now some people are going to say, well, my property taxes have gone up. Well, keep in mind, Rapid City uh, is roughly only about 12% of that property tax bill. And the other thing is, it all also depends on the assessment of properties. As they get more accurate as far as doing assessments or basically establishing the value of homes through the equalization process, there are going to be some people that in the past may have been underassessed, and yes, they might take a hit. Now, on the other hand, there's a lot of folks, including myself, quite honestly, my property taxes um, have stayed very constant the last four or five years, and if you adjust it for inflation, I'm, my property taxes have gone up less than the rate of inflation. And I think that's probably fairly true of, of everyone across the community. Some people are going to stand up and tell you, my property, you know, my property taxes went up 10% this year. Well, typically that's a function of the assessed value of the property being brought up to market. That isn't the dollar amount or the mill levy that's being charged. Right. Thank you, Mayor Hanks. Do you have a follow-up bill? Or? Okay, just one question. Does the county have a CPA? The county would use the 2.9% CPI just as all municipalities within the state. That is the number that came from the State Department of Revenue that was spread. Do you know what that, their amount was? It's the same 2.9%. The I CPI mean, is throughout the state. But do they, based on this, don't they get 23%? So they get, their actually total is more than 337. Correct. And do they use that every year or you don't know at this point? I'm not sure at this point. I've never asked. They do. I've never known them not to take Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Questions on CPI, Council? Um, Karen Olson, please. I think it would be helpful. I think it'd be helpful to just go through this um, example of not what happens if you don't take the CPI. Okay. And we and Pauline probably is the best person to explain this. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Ms. Pauline. Thank you, Madam Chair. I handed out a sheet for you tonight. At the top it says example of not taking CPI for the city's annual budget. This is a spreadsheet that Colleen started last year. I be well, she probably started before that, but I saw it last year just to show you the cumulative effect of what would happen if you did not take the CPI. Pauline, um, just can you show us what page one more time? It's a one sheet that says example of not taking CPI for the city's annual budget. I have a couple extras if you can't find it. Yes, I, I have it. Thank you. Okay. Everybody else have that paper? Council? There you go. Okay, thank you. I started with the base that Colleen had set out that the tax is actually levied in 04 and 405 of $9.8 million. As you know, by various uh, discussions, we are allowed to take the base plus growth plus CPI up to 3%. So the first section shows what 
the total tax levy would be for 2005 with the CPI would be 10.5 million with that would be 10.2. Whatever you decide to do as far as the total levy that becomes your base for the following year. And then again, you can add the growth and the CPI on that. And so I did that for four years. So in four years, if you were to take the CPI, total tax revenues would be about $45.8 million, $45 million. If you do not take that CPI for four consecutive years, the cumulative effect would be $42.7 million. Of that, 1.2 is strictly just the CPI amount each year. And another 1.8 million is the cumulative effect of not being able to take additional CPI on top of that and additional growth. So over the course of a four year period, the city of Rapid City would lose over $3 million in general fund revenues to be able to fund services that we provide. That's a four year period. Malcolm Chapman, did you have a question? Okay, Ron Weichelbach. Sorry, Ron. I, Pauline, is this example if we don't take it one year or is it if we don't take it four years consecutively? This is if you take it four years consecutively. If we don't take it four years consecutively. Mm -hmm. But today we're talking about one year. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. I had a question, but it went right out of my mind. Ms. Karen, please. In thinking about this discussion, um, I've always supported taking the CPI because what you're doing really is talking about the city's ability to um, provide goods and services or purchase goods and services. And um, what you're looking at is, is the inflation rate. So that the, the 2.9 is just really bringing up your buying power because of the loss that inflation creates and so you continue to need that the city needs that buying power as they um, in order to provide the same set of serious uh, services and goods and um, in any budget for a governing body the most significant cost is salaries and that's talking about the people who work and um, today or a few days ago at one of the discussions with the school district, there was the suggestion that they could instantly balance their budget and if they fired 100 people. But we know that as in schools, the real key thing that makes um, government run are the folks who work for government. And so the point would be as we move forward, it's important to, that we be able to buy the same amount of goods and services in behalf of the citizens of Rapid City because I rarely hear, not rarely, I'm not sure I've ever asked someone to, for less services. People never ask for less services. They um, always are interested in some increase. And so if we want to even stay even, CPI, which represents the loss in buying power, needs, and it, since it is available, I think that's an important thing that we do for people. It also is important for our employees as we move forward. Um, over a period of time, the loss could begin to affect a whole range of services and, and, um, that we provide that, and that are expected to be provided by our citizens. So from my point of view, the decision to support this makes sense because we are saying to our employees, we want you to have the same buying power and that is why we are making sure that salaries keep up with the consumer price index so that the dollars that they're earning this year are going to be able to buy them the same in goods and services next year. I think it's especially important when we look at the potential for increases in basic costs of services this year, which would be costs of fuel um, across the board. So it makes sense to me that we would take advantage of this provision of the law to be able to take that cost of living increase that really all it's doing is making sure the buying power 
of the dollars of today of tomorrow are the same as the buying power of today's dollars. Ms. Karen, Thank is you. that a motion? Yes. I would make a motion to take the CPI. Right. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion on taking the CPI? Sam Quaker. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd speak against the motion, and here's why. What we've, what we've heard is we've heard the compound effect of, of, of a presentation on the compound effect on the city's budget on not taking the CPI. Uh, what we haven't been presented is the compound effect on the taxpayer of taking the, uh, the uh, CPI. Uh, the information that we were presented tonight uh, was good, but it also should have included uh, um, that compound effect and also commercial and non-owner occupy, which affects uh, every, which ultimately would affect every renter um, in the in the community as well. And uh, I think that um, without additional uh, discussion on on other ways to fund uh, the important uh, items that were brought up two weeks ago, um, I, I think uh, taking the CPI as the first item on the agenda is not something that we should be doing. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Any discussion on the CPI? Um, Mr. Weifenbach, please. Thank you. I have made a vocal that I'm against the same. I, I, and the reason being is one of the uh, challenges we have as a city council person is to make calls based on facts. My fact is that our administrator, the mayor, has presented us with a budget that doesn't include an increase in the CPI. He's the first-hand person involved with the everyday operations of the city. It, it, to him, it doesn't seem to be uh, a necessary thing to do. I also agree there's an argument made for the fact of the compounding effect on taking this CPI. I think there's other, other factors that weigh into the fact on when we talk about growth and we talk about salaries and, 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 we, and we have uh, increased uh, strains on our infrastructure with our, with our department heads and the people in the city, such as uh, tax revenue districts that we've diverted funds for particular reasons, for particular growth reasons. Those funds have been diverted in the tune of, uh, I'm assuming, I, I don't know what that number is, but I know in 2007 it was over $600,000. And I think at some point it would be responsible for the city council as a whole to, to have a, a good debate about this and, and have all the facts and weigh out the pros and cons, not just what the cumulative effect would be if, if we don't take it. So that would be my argument to not take the CPI. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Any more discussion on taking the CPI? Alan Hanks, or Mayor Hanks, please. Thank you, Deb. I, I think it's important that I clarify my position. Um, I, I think it was, wasn't quite accurate, which was, was just stated in the fact that this is the second year that I have not included the CPI within the budget. But I've also included what I consider very important additional uh, requirements that we have within the city and that what I would require that what I would request that you actually take a look at taking the CPI. I've been very clear in my position is the fact that although I do not include it in the budget, the reason I do not include it in the budget is because I did not want it to become automatic like it has been in the past. In the past, it has been automatically included in the budget. There was no discussion at this council level whether or not it was appropriate and where to actually spend that, that additional money. Um, so because of the, to suggest that the reason that, to suggest that it's, it's not important because I didn't include it in the budget, I don't think is a fair analogy. The reason I didn't include it is because I want to make sure before you take the CPI, that you have full discussion uh, and determination that you, there is a need in this community. And I will tell you, and I've been very public for this year, is the fact that I believe that need is there. The other thing I want to point out is the fact that I presented this council a balanced budget. Not only did I present you a balanced budget, I presented you a budget that actually rolled back about $300,000 or about half a percent. I actually went in and I cut an awful lot of the departments because I knew it was going to be a rough year. If you add the CPI in, you know what you have? You have a budget that's exactly the same as it was last year, a zero growth budget. So I have a hard time when folks start making the argument about that we're, 
that not to take the CPI because government is growing, in this case, that is not borne out in fact. Because w even if you add the CPI back in, we're exactly where we were last year. I cut about 300 and I think it was a little over 300, help me out here, what was it, $320,000 out, out of the budget compared to last year. So even if you take the CPI, guess what? You have a zero growth budget. And it becomes a little bit frustrating for me when people suggest that city government is growing when we have zero growth. You have to forgive me, I, I get a little bit frustrated when people have a tendency to, to twist my words or try to state something that is not quite factual. Numbers don't lie. Even with the CPI, you have a zero growth budget. Thank you. Thank you, Alan Higgs. Um, questions, Council? We do have a motion and a second on the floor to take the CPI. Any more discussion? All in, sorry, Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, have been vocal that I think it's a responsible thing to do, um, but I, I don't know if I understand. I'd like to ask the mayor, um, based on what Karen said, if we agree that you know really this is just kind of to take the CPI is, is keeping uh, inflation at bay, so that we still have the same purchasing power for goods and services uh, that we had the, the previous year. Um, knowing that cumulative effect over a, a number of years and then based on what you just said that it's not automatic and then gives the council an opportunity to have this discussion about it um, and then if we take the CPI it's still a zero growth budget all of those things I think are factual having said all that why didn't you put the CPI in the budget and we could still have a discussion on it even if it's in the budget we could still have a discussion on it and say, yes, let's take it, or no, let's not take it. So I don't think it would be automatic just because you put it in the budget. So I'd like for the mayor to answer sure. that. Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for the question, Alderman uh, Chapman. To me, it's a philosophical question, and that is the fact that in the past, I was on the council for six years, and when the CPI was included, I will just tell you my experience is that it, let it, it was never discussed. It was never brought forward. And the reason is, is because once it's put in the budget, it's easy to just gloss over it and not have those discussions because it's built in automatically. My philosophy has always been transparency, open government. And you know what, if we're gonna talk about taking the CPI, I think we need to talk about it. And we also need to make sure that the citizens of Rapid City understand the need for it. To me, it, it's all about transparency. Why do we need to take the CPI? Well, I can tell you real quick. There's a couple different reasons. One is $4 gas. Very simple. We spend a tremendous amount in gas every single year. I will tell you, we spend, we're going to spend more money on gas going from 3 to $4 than this entire increase in CPI. I can tell you we. I know we will. I also know that everything we buy, we had a discussion the other night about road salt, that it's doubled. Everything we do has gone up. We're not, we're not any different than any other customer out there. And Although I understand people struggle a little bit, you know what, the city is struggling trying to provide the same services at the, the services at the same level with less buying power every single year. And that is a real struggle. Um, so, like I say, I think Alderman uh, Olson was exactly right. The CPA, uh, CPI is specifically designed to try and keep up with inflation to make sure that your the buying power, that tax dollar, remains constant. So, thank, thank you. you Alan. Um, just a, a follow before up? you leave, yeah, just, I just want to make sure I understood. So, the reason why you didn't include it, even though you agree this year that maybe the council should take it, um, is just a philosophical reason for not taking it. Well, it's a philosophical question of not automatically including it. I want to make sure that, that the council has the discussion, identifies that there is a need to take the CPI, and that way that, that uh, the folks in the community realize that we've had that discussion and we've made that determination instead of just automatically taking it. But, you know, there again, it, it's, it's always been a phil philosophical question for me, and yes, I've been very public this year. Um, I had a heck of a time balancing this budget this year. Uh, you know, we actually, and, and we talk about coming back with a balanced budget, 
you can you can uh, talk to your staff and they will tell you that we went in and what was proposed versus what was actually presented to you I think we cut out about four and a half million dollars Pauline is that what we cut out four and a half to five million dollars out of the general fund yep and and the reason we did that was so we didn't go into reserves we had I could have presented a, a, a budget to you and dipped into the reserves and and taken a three percent increase like we have in the past but I didn't think that was the appropriate thing to do I didn't think that was uh, the responsible thing to do um, so we have a very tight budget and anytime you have a very tight budget you depend on those revenue sources um, the other thing I will tell you is if whatever your choice is if, if you take the CPI or if you don't if you don't take the CPI um, I will tell you uh, you will not have the opportunity to do literally anything else in this budget without starting to talk about reducing employees you literally can't do it and so if you have any desire to add and I'm going to use an example add a worker to the parks department like we've been talking about for the last four or five years realistically you, you have to take the CPI because there's no other way really to fund it unless you want to go back and do something as drastic as freezing wages and there again philosophically I think that's absolutely the worst thing you could possibly ever propose to the city is, is try to freeze wages and the reason is we just talked about it people are struggling typically we give adjustments and those adjustments <coughs> people count on it and we've made obligations to our employees and, and and I would, my philosophy has always been people over equipment and programs. And without those good employees, quite honestly, our service is going to absolutely suffer. It will go downhill. We have an incredible staff, and quite honestly, it's taken us a number of years to recruit and retain uh, the quality of staff that we have. Thank you, Alan. Just follow up. I'll get off my soapbox no, no, now. Just a comment. Um, I, mean, I, I appreciate your answer, and I. Um, uh, again, I, I think it's a responsible thing to do to take the CPI every year. Uh, but I will ask this. Um, I had an election this year, and I guess I didn't have an election, so I'm on the council for two more years. So I'll, I'll go through this process again next year. If you're in the same seat next year, I would ask you now to include the CPI in the budget when you present the budget. And I will guarantee you that there will be a discussion about should it be there or not, because I think it puts the council in a tenuous position to make it look and sound in the community that the council is now raising the property tax and the mayor has nothing to do with it. I don't think that at the end of the day that the mayor can have it both ways. You can't not put it in the budget and then come and ask the council but fund these sorts of things over here. I, I think then that's the decision of the council of what then it gets funded if the council is going to take that CPI. So my request now would be Put it in the budget next year. Doesn't violate your phys philosophical reasoning of it. We'll have the dis I guarantee we'll have the discussion. That's my Thank comment. you, Malcolm Chapman. Um, Sam Quaker, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to ask um, Karen for a clarification on the motion. Would, would your motion, Karen, take to take the CPI or to take it and spend it on the list of items that Malcolm had presented no. two weeks ago? Hers if I'm correct, it's just to take the CPI. Okay. Um, I'm not sure at what point is appropriate to uh, to, di to to discuss it, but um, in terms of growth in the budget, there is significant uh, growth in terms of um, salaries for pay grades 22 and above of approximately seven and a half percent, and that is a um, there, that is a concern, um, and. We can prob perhaps discuss that under Maybe. item two, but um, you, there sir. is indeed um, growth, significant growth in the budget. And I kind of gave the mayor some leeway, and I appreciate the council giving him leeway. He kind of went to the next step, but um, we have Ron Weifenbach next, and then Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate the mayor explaining some of his uh, position, and, and I appreciate my colleague, Alderman Malcolm Chapman, for his explanation there. But I, I feel compelled to, to make sure that I make my point because my point wasn't that government is growing. That's not my point. My point is that the city of Rapid City is growing. The, 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 the stresses on the infrastructure of our employees is growing at the same time. And we've made the conscious decision to divert some of those sales tax revenues for future revenues. And I just want my colleagues to keep that in mind 
And having a conversation on the CPI is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Malcolm Chapman and then Ms. Pat. Patty, sorry. I just wanted to um, make a point. Um, by allowing us to discuss the CPI as a separate thing, it gives the city council more direct control over how it is spent. I assume if it was part of, included in the budget before, the mayor had the choice of where it went as far as budget. And then it would have been pretty hard, I guess, for the city council to pick apart where the CPI went as far as if it was included, automatically included in the budget. This is a separate thing. We have more direct control over where it goes and more discussion of where the need more lies, which might differ from what the mayor so Thank you. All I had to say. Thank you, Ms. Patty. Um, Malcolm Chapman, please. Just a comment on Sam's question about Karen's motion. Um, Karen's motion, as I understood it, was to take the CPI. My point last week or whenever we met um, was to move us somewhere because we were stuck. We had four or five pages worth of unfunded things that we were talking about without a real way to whittle that down to something that was manageable. The point of my motion last week, and I didn't expect it to pass, I turned to Alderman Krepke on my left last time and said, will you make a substitute motion? I turned to Sam and asked him would he second a motion um, so that there could be more discussion about the budget. I think that we did need to have more discussion, but we weren't moving anywhere, so I thought I'd put a motion um, out there. Um, I, I like the motion that's on the floor to, uh, to take the CPI and to keep it separate from what it should be funding. So, I mean, we, we will still have that control next year if the mayor puts it into the budget. I think we still have that control. And that's the challenge this council, I think, just doesn't get. We still have the opportunity right now, today and until the end of September, to go inside of this budget and find $337,000, which is equivalent to the CPI. We shouldn't get tied that the CPI equals what we, what I said, let's give to um, Black Hills Vision or the Dahl or uh, Wavy or um, Front Porch Coalition. They don't necessarily equate. We could find that money within the budget. And those are two different conversations in my mind. Thank you. Um, we do have a motion on the floor by Karen, second by Lloyd. Any other discussion? Bill Krepke, please. Thank you very much. You know, we always do things just because we've always been doing it. Ever since probably time immemorial, we've, we've always done things the same way. Uh, we've all gone to classes, we've all gone to, uh, we've all gone to uh, League of Cities, and we've all learned how to do budgeting, and we've all learned how to do all this stuff. And it's almost like we come back and we forget. And we don't take these, these uh, concepts, the procedures, the processes, and bring it to the table here. And I'd like to ask the mayor, if I could, please, that, you know, I appreciate your hard work and the hard work that all the staff has done. But you said you cut $300,000 out of the budget. I mean, you, you I, I wrote down, you hey, said hey. you cut down, you cut out $300,000. The, the proposed budget this year was $300,000 less than the 08 budget. The 09 budget is $300,000 less than the 08 budget. If you're talking about what we actually cut out, which was actually requested by the departments, that equated to, I think it was two and a half, three million dollars. A gazillion dollars. Yeah, a bunch <laughs> of money that we don't have. So the question is, is that uh, if, if I may continue the conversation, uh, so what base, what, what, how did you base that you required that you needed to cut that 300000 Because I didn't believe it was, was re responsible or appropriate to dip into our reserves. The council established a reserve of 15% of the general fund budget, which was about $6 million. And, and unless we went back and made those reductions from the request, we would have dipped into those reserves by about $2.5 million. You know, I, you know, I'll be the first one to be the, be the cheerleader for tips. And I've, you know, it's like, there's a, there hasn't been hardly any that I didn't like, uh, like Will Rogers and Never Met a Man He Didn't Like. But, you know, we, we go on the premise that we give these TIFs with the grand expectations that we're going to get significant sales tax from it. And the perfect example is, is Cabela's. You know, we're anticipating what they were saying, uh, half a million to, to uh, 
to to a million dollars in additional sales tax. Uh, you know, we can laugh about that, but if you look at it, if uh, you know, if you take two percent out of uh, five million dollars, that's what's that? Three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars, five hundred, whatever it is. Significant money is what I'm talking about, and that's just one. And I'm anticipating that the Rushmore Crossing is going to come online here pretty darn pretty soon, and I suspect they'll be starting to generate additional sales tax. And it's not just monies that's going to be shifted from one store to another, one location to another location. We're talking new new stores that's going to provide goods and services that we've never had before. So my point is, is that, you know, I'm not going to ask you what, what you look in your crystal ball and say what is, how much of an increase are we going to have in sales tax, because I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I suspect it's going to be significant. And I suspect that that $300,000 will be, be more than adequately rep uh, replaced by this additional sales tax. So my question to you, is that would it be that inappropriate to say to you, the mayor, and the staff to anticipate that additional $300,000 in, in sales tax that we, if we believed what we've been saying all along, that these, these uh, TIFs are going to generate additional sales tax, then it's probably appropriate to, to challenge you and the staff to say maybe there is an opportunity to stick that $300,000 back in there. And where I'm going with is that if we can do that, we don't have to take the CPI. Isn't there, isn't it a, isn't there an opportunity that, you know, I, and I appreciate all the work that the staff did putting these numbers together, and, and if you don't take them all four years, you can easily come up with a, with a great deal of money. But just one year, just once, can't we just tell the, 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 the taxpayers of, of Rapid City and Pennington County that, you know, we're going to give this back to you just once. Just once. I know it's not a big deal. It's a dollar. A, it's a dollar a month and only twelve dollars a year. But can't we just tell the taxpayers that we we're going to try to help you just once? I think that's appropriate to do that. And if we can anticipate the tiffs or the the additional sales tax to cover this three hundred thousand and put that in, then we don't have to take the CPI. And so, I truly believe in my heart of hearts that that's going to happen. I think we have the, the capacity and, and, and the potential here in Rapid City, since we are growing and whatnot, that we can meet that $300,000 that the CPI is going to give us. So with that logic, with that logic that we should have an opportunity to say just one time to the taxpayers that we're going to cut you a break just one year at least, so that we're not always saying that CPI, by gosh, is a guarantee. So. I'm not going to support this. I'm not going to support this motion because I believe in my heart of hearts that that this three hundred thousand dollars will be more than replaced by the by the additional sales tax that we're going to get. Bill, Thank did you, you have a question for the mayor? Well, no, that was not a question. That's just oh. yeah, that's <laughs> my thought. I, thought I, I was, said I had a question for the mayor. Well, it was it was the three hundred thousand dollars, and, and I'm, you know the challenge to that you believe that there's a possibility that or a, a good possibility that this three hundred thousand could be replaced. And your budget could reflect the additional sales tax that you may not have had. Let me respond just very quick, very quickly. Just you know how how we have traditionally and we continue to make estimates as far as sales taxes. We look historically at what the sales tax have been, how it's been increasing. Uh, this year, 4.5. Where are we at as far as increase? 4.35 percent, which is almost a full point higher than what we were predicting last year at 3.5%. So we took, we took some of that crystal ball vision as far as seeing an increase in taxes, but even adding that additional uh, basically point in there, I was very, still very concerned, and I, and I will tell you, um, we've been somewhat fortunate because Rapid City has been somewhat isolated and insulated from the rest of the economy. But you have to remember, we're dealing with a budget that doesn't start until December and doesn't end until the, literally the fall, well, it starts January 1 and doesn't end till December 31st of 2009. So we're trying to look literally not quite a year and a half out into the future and my crystal ball isn't that clear. <laughs> and if I'm going to err, I would rather err on the side of being conservative because if sales tax revenue come in above that, this city council has the ability to go out and look at the needs and do supplementals to the budget. Now, on the other hand, if it comes in below, 
now we're looking at reserves or we're looking at cutting programs or cutting people. And so I guess I have a tendency to be uh, extremely fiscally conservative in, in making those projections and I'd rather be pleased on the backside than disappointed. And knowing that if we're pleased, we have the ability to go out and hire the additional park workers the, or the additional uh, police officers or the additional staff and, and add in those programs that we couldn't include in that budget. But to me, I would rather be conservative uh, than too liberal with the estimates and be disappointed and then try to figure out how we're going to actually pay for everything. Because the reality of it is, once you put a program or a person in, you can't take it away. Not without a huge fight. You know, I appreciate you being conservative and, and I'm sure all of us around this table are too. Because we don't want to, we don't want to do anything that would jeopardize our, our community. But let me ask you this question. To, you, you said you used 4.3% sales tax? So the, the growth from two, for, for last year, for 2007, was 4.3. And so, so if we continue with 4.3, we have an increase or, or we're anticipating the same amount of sales tax. The projected sales tax revenue for 2009, help me off Pauline here, is basically 4.3% uh, above the 2008. And actually, it's a little bit more complicated because what we do is we add two years together I'm getting ahead to, too, so. <laughs> yeah, to actually come, to actually have a moving average to determine what the estimated sales tax revenue is. Paul, you probably have it right in front of you, don't you? I do. In the past, when they projected revenue for sales tax, it's always been, if it was for 2008, they would look at 2006, add 3%, and then add another 3%. Well, what we did for 2009 is we took the 2007 actual, added 4%, and added 4%. So for 2009, <coughs> it's actually a 5.81% increase over 2008. Okay, so we already took some of that into consideration. So, thank you, Pauline. So if you wanted to go this extra $300,000 in additional sales tax, what percentage would that be of an increase than what we're talking about? I mean, 2%? 2% for 300000 For additional? About one and a half. So you're saying we, we'd have to increase 55 to 5.5% increase to get just $300,000 additional money? Paul, in assumption, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. We estimated $18.6 million in sales tax revenue for 2008. So a 1% increase is only $180,000. So for every 1% you increase it, you increase your additional revenue by 180000 Correct. And that's go from 5% up to an estimated 7% increase. That's correct. We only get $18 million in sales tax? In the general fund. That's the, just the general fund sales tax. We get f about $43 million total, but it's split between four different funds. Ms. Pauline. Sorry, guys. We have a question from Ron Weifenbach. I just want to know, 18.6 million from sales tax. How much from uh, property tax? In, revenue. in 2008, we estimated 11.6 million dollars in property tax for the general fund and 18.6 million for sales tax in the general fund. If you actually look in the front of your book, you can actually see the sales tax. Now keep in mind the $18 million is only a portion of what we get in sales tax. That's the general fund sales tax. I mean, there, there's 2012, there's triple B. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that we get. Um, do you have that, Pauline? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's true. Mr. Okrepke, did you have a motion and, with your and, discussion? And, Excuse me, sir. No, I don't need a motion. Thank you. And Sorry. Just I'm... there again, point of clarification. When, when we're talking budget, even though we have an overall budget of $127 million, what really what we always talk about is the general fund budget, which is about $45 million. Because everything else is basically enterprise funds, which means that they basically are self-supporting. So, you know, even though it, you know, it sounds like $127 million is an awful lot of money, is, that's typically money that basically goes in and out to provide services. So really what we're talking about is $45 million. And to get that $45 million, what you start doing is you start adding up the sales tax plus the property tax and some fees that we get, and that's how we come up with the $45 million, including, keep in mind, the unencumbered cash that we get a rollback from last year. 
which was there again about two and a half million dollars short of where it should have been, which put us in the situation we're in this year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Hanks. Um, <laughs> um, Council, we do have a motion on the floor. Um, is there any other discussion on CPI? Uh, Malcolm Chapman, please. It seems as if we've had a lot of latitude, so I'm not going to ask a question about CPI. <laughs> I'm just going to ask it just to, or throw out a basic comment. I'm starting to question if the council is even ready to discuss this. It seems to me that this was budgeting 101 that we just went through. And we, we have questions about how the, I mean, how sale, I mean, how the money even comes into the system. I mean, I question if we're ready to even seriously talk about the issues of CPI and um, looking into the budget. I, I, I just question that. Okay, thank you, Malcolm Chapman. We have a motion by Karen to take the CPI and a second by Lloyd. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Can we have roll call, please, Jackie? LaCroix. Aye. Martinson? Aye. Adcock? Aye. Krepke? No. Chapman? Aye. Weifenbach? No. Olson? Aye. Kroger? Aye. Quaker? No. That motion carries on a vote of three to six. Thank you, Jackie. Council, we are now on to Mayor's budget. Thank you for the discussion. I appreciated the discussion. It was a very good discussion and we are on now on mayor's budget. Um, if you have questions on the mayor's budget or you would like to change things on the mayor's budget, we can put that on the board for the changes. So we have a list or we can have Pauline, either one, um, write those down if we do have some changes on the mayor's budget. So um, council, as you wish, would we like it to be put on the board or um, of the changes, if there's any changes, or we would just like Pauline to read those back for us what would the council wish to make it easier for them to see if there's any changes i brought the board here for that reason sometimes it's easier to see what you want to change than it is just to have somebody read it back karen olson please it's definitely helpful to have it on the board so that we are looking at it and the dollar amount and thank you Ms. So karen. that's very helpful thank you if the council wishes um lloyd lacory <coughs> thank you madam chair I think the only thing that I've, I've thought about in the changing of this was, you know, I thought heavy on the, on the 100,000 that the mayor put in for destination downtown, and I've thought heavy on the growth management part, uh, losing or relocating two people in their department, um, and, and the cut was like $56,000. So I guess what I'd like to see was probably take 20. Lord, Lloyd, just, just one second. What's on the floor of the motion is if we should put it on the board and I sure think that's what I'm just about ready to say. Sorry. Sorry so <laughs> I thought, so what I'd like to do is take twenty eight thousand dollars, which is half of that fifty six that she's getting cut from that hundred thousand. OK, and that's what it would be on the board. So you would say put let's put it on the board. That's OK. Council looks like we want to have these on the board. Thank you, Lloyd. Sorry to interrupt you. I was trying to figure out. I think I think <laughs> that's a compromise. It's half. It gives them work and room to work through the following years is Did, my reason for that. Thank you, Pauline, for writing these down for us. We appreciate that. Um, we're putting um, changes on the mayor's budget on the board so everybody understands um, what everybody um, wants to do on the mayor's budget, if that's okay. Give me just a sec, Sam, so she's got that before we go on. And then if you would, council, if you make a change, make sure she writes the right thing for you. I appreciate that. Is that correct? No, I think des destination downtown has 100,000 and half of what Growth management's losing it's 58, so that'd be uh, 28, wouldn't it? 56. 56, yeah. You want to take the whole 100,000 away? No, just 
minus 28,000 from the 100. So destination would have not 28,000. Okay. Will you put the 72 up there showing the difference of what he's talking about? Um, I think Sam was next, if we could, please. So we're not going to talk about what is that list the changes if we could. I have three items in that I would like to add. One is the, uh, the mayor and council travel budget. And I'm, I'm going to propose uh, a reduction to $30,000. I don't know what the exact dollar amount is of the proposed budget. I think it's 45, 45 or something like that. 40, 45 or to 30. Uh, 45 to 30. Yeah. That way we have the 45 to 30 so we know where it went from. If you would put the 45 on there, Miss Pauline, that way we knew. Okay. Okay, so it went from 45 to 30. Okay, thank you, Sam. Next. Um, I would also like to have the opportunity to discuss the, um, the three scheduled step increases for K-22 and above below. Say that total one more time, please, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Do you have a, of a change on Wavy that you want on the budget? And then we can have discussion. Please, Sam. Um, well, can, can I ask you a question? Well, two weeks ago, you, you mentioned 25000 What was the previous Wavy that you were talking about? Was it 25000 Three quarters one way and a quarter the other way based on uh, services. I think it was 18 and 12, if okay, I'm correct. So I remember 18. What we'll do, Council, if that's okay, sorry, Sam, is we'll write a. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sam. What we're doing is listing all these. That way we can go through and vote on them or. Do you want to change it or not change it kind of thing? I think it'd be easier to get the list first. Um, we do have Malcolm Chapman and then Miss Karen after that. Okay, Karen Olson. Mine was a question about defining. Um, my question is, each council member is allocated a monthly, I think it's $75. $100, um, I think. Is it 100 um, For travel. 75. Isn't it 75? Yeah. Sorry, Ms. So I was right. Um, so you get it. Is that number calculated into this um, 45,000? That's a separate. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Bill Krepke, please. Thank you. Uh, is it possible to, in, uh, in, be cons in being consistent with the rest of them, instead of saying that I'm going to find the $28,000 from uh, Destination Rapid City, just just say the growth management's $28,000, figure out what the price, where the money's going to come from there. That's where it's coming from, from Destination. 
<laughs> so you want to you want to cut that's specifically? Where, that's where I located it from. So Bill, that's where, okay, not to, and not to interrupt you guys. First, we'll go through it, and then we can all. But th that was I appreciate that a little bit of leeway. But um, right now we're just making the list, and then we'll go through and we'll have a discussion on each and vote vote on each if that's okay, Council. Any other changes to the mayor's budget? Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to add back the $75,000 pledge that the city made to Black Hills Vision and uh, $50,000 back to economic development. I feel that those are two important items. Thank you, Ron. Phil, Pauline Sumption. And at this point, we're talking about mayor's budget. So thank you, Ms. Pauling. Um, Bill Krefke, please. Thank you. Uh, this may be a question for the police chief. This, this new position that for um, fingerprinting, is that a full time? I mean, is that 2,000 hours or is that something sick? Because somewhere around the way I heard it was like 300 hours a year. Bill, are you asking them because you need to change something in the budget? Could I ask you that well, question? Well, I'm just saying if it's 300 hours, I'm not so sure that, that we should consider a full-time equivalent person for that. How about if we put that down in the discussion and when it comes through, then we'll put that down instead of asking the question because everybody else is not getting the okay, question. Okay, we can ask the question later. Would you like to write that? Sorry, Chief. Would you like to put that on the board if that's okay, Mr. Okrepke? Thank you, sir. Any other changes to the mayor's budget or anything we want to talk about on the mayor's budget? Karen Olson. I would like to talk about the um, Dahl Center's uh, operation costs, which they have throughout the process of um, requesting um, the expansion of the building. I think they've been very responsible in sharing with us what they believe okay. are the ongoing costs with the larger building. Okay. And I, my understanding that is that that is um, $66,000. Okay. And I, uh, at some point, we, I might call on um, Linda just to make certain there are two items that she's looking at. And thank you, Ms. Karen. Know that's included. Um, thank you. At that point, if the council wants to open it up to public discussion on some of these because they might know the answers, that would be up to the council. Um, any other items to be discussed on mayor's budget? Thank you, Madam Chair. I forgot one item. I know it was $20,000 for the copier for the <laughs> city attorney. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Bill Krepke, please. Th thank you. Let's not forget the 9 11. 9 11. Malcolm Chapman. I just have a question. <coughs> I, I mean, I, I understand how we started off. Lloyd started off saying, let's take some money from the place and let's add something to the budget. I mean, a lot of these items at the end are, are items that people, I mean, they, they aren't in the mayor's budget. So I, I guess I'm, I'm a little confused. Well, at this point, um, we can say when we go through that funding source CPI, because when we go through this, people are going to have to know where that funding source is that brought this up or where the, what they're changing in the mayor's budget in order to fund what they brought up. You, I, and I know we just put them up there. I would almost request that because we just had a discussion on CPI where people didn't want to take extra money. Which I understand. But now people want to put extra things on the board. I mean, so where is that money coming from? That's what's going to come through when the discussion comes, Mr. Chapman. You have to have a funding source yeah. at that point. So, thank you. Any other discussion on changes on mayor's budget? This is the list first, and then at that point, it'll be, um, you need, there's going to need to be a funding source, so if you are making changes at that point um, to the mayor's budget where you're going to take something and put something back in, that's where the funding is going to come from. So, um, that will be the discussion. Any other Mr. LaCroix, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I guess I'm just as confused as Malcolm is because I identified a 
a funding source from the mayor's budget. That's what we were talking about. If this is the way we're going to do it, then I want to add the CBB, the chamber, you know. I think, can I, can I stop the discussion yeah. just for a second? I think some of these people that are bringing this up, they're taking it from the mayor's budget. They're not taking it from the CPI, if I'm correct. They're going to take it from the mayor's budget. Okay. Because the discussion at this point is the mayor's budget. It's not CPI. Am I correct, Council? Uh -uh. Okay, but they need a right. Yes, sir. The CPI amount, Sam, three thirty seven. And maybe I'm going about this wrong. And if I, I could probably use some help and I'll just tell you right now. What, what my point was, was for mayor's budget changes. And if you were gonna change things in the mayor's budget, then that's what should be on the board. So if we have to delete items that aren't coming from the mayor's budget, that's the discussion at this point, council members. Uh, Malcolm Chapman. I'm asking the council because I, I'm, I'm challenging the council a little bit. So we just had this lengthy discussion about CPI, whether we should take it or not take it. Yes. And the council voted to take it. So I guess we'll, we'll take the CPI at least at this stage. I mean, this still has to go through a couple readings and at the dais and all. And vehemently, council members argued not to take that money because it's a bad thing. Right. But now we should use that money on things that they think are important. I didn't say you said that. I'm just at, I'm challenging the council. I, that's why I say I like the way Lloyd did it. Lloyd said, I think that we ought to take $28,000 from Destination Imagination. I mean, Destination Rapid. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a Destination Imagination. <laughs> destination Rapid City. And we ought to put that money to growth management. It has nothing to do with CPI. Yeah. That's okay. My understanding was the first, like, the Destination Growth Management taking money on the travel budget, um, the Hill Fund, the Wavy and the Swan Gorges, that was my understanding with the okay. state budget, something on the mayor's budget to put over something else, not, <coughs> nothing to do with CPI. <coughs> Thank you. And I guess that's my understanding is to go through these. And if the, I thought that at this point, some people understood that this wasn't CPI, that we're talking about the mayor's budget, Malcolm. So I, I guess hold I on just a sec, Malcolm. Let me finish, please. So we are talking on the mayor's budget. The CPI discussion was the last discussion. And I apologize if we're not getting my point and maybe I didn't make it correctly. If you are putting these on the list, this is for the mayor's budget. These are changes in the mayor's budget. If they don't belong there, when we go through this list, I'm pretty sure that will be made a point. And when it comes to like growth management and they want to change that or he has changed that, then that will be the discussion. When it comes to travel and uh, mayor and council to from 30 to he can cut that budget at that time it doesn't come from CPI so some of the discussion and if the discussion is 911 and Bill brought that up um, he didn't want the CPI maybe he's taking it from something from the mayor's budget so maybe I'm wrong Malcolm Malcolm Chapman I understand what you're saying Thank you, Malcolm. And then we put $337,000 up there as if all of this stuff is then coming from the CPI increase that we're talking about. I didn't put that up there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mayor Hanks. Madam Chairman, or Madam President, if I may just make a point. I understand what you're saying, but keep something in mind. When the council just voted to accept the CPI, you in essence just added $337,000 to my proposed budget. Right. And so I think what you need to take a look at is the overall budget, which includes both my recommendations plus the 337. I don't think there's any distinction now between CPI, uh, the vote on CPI, and what the mayor's proposed budget was, because now it's included. Keep in mind is once you did, once you voted to uh, uh, take the CPI, now you do have an additional $337,000 in the budget. 
and I guess that's the way I've always, my philosophy has always been is once you've accepted it, you just basically, by that vote, you amended my proposed budget. Okay. I'm going to apologize. I didn't know who was next to speak. Ron, did you have your hand up? I'm sorry. No, I appreciate the mayor speaking. He, he quite eloquently explained the situation. The bottom line is it's the taxpayer's dollars. It all goes into the budget. It, it just, I was vehemently against the CPI. Does that mean I, I might as well just go home? Or do I have an opportunity to help rest through the rest of this process of this budget? I think he handled it eloquently. I'll leave it at that. I think last time what we did is we put everything together and, and the discussion was I think we didn't go m too far. So I put it in a separate and it, it does come together and I understand that. Um, if, if the wish is now this CPI list because we have the 337 and understand that was a good understanding of what the mayor just said, then we should make this list for everything. And if that's the council's um, determination at this point, let's, let's do a, <coughs> I, I don't know if we do a motion on it or if someone has a suggestion of a motion that we just take the 337 and the mayor's budget together, if I could have that motion. Karen, please. I agree with the mayor. I mean, we've already, we've added this number of dollars and um, to the discussion, and I voted to take the CPI, so I feel justified in adding something to this. Thank um, you. Do you have a motion to put both together? Ms. I don't Karen? think I don't think I I don't think it's necessary to have that motion. I think okay. we now understand we're talking about additional dollars in the budget. Okay, so we'll just write everything that we want to put down on here, go through the list, and vote on it. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you, Council. Identify a fund when we do it. And identify a fund. Thank you, Lloyd. <coughs> Thank you, Council. Maybe I was just the only one confused, and I apologize for that. <laughs> um, Patty, please. Yeah, I guess, I guess my understanding was that we would, like, the CPI, I guess, is now part of the budget, but we were, like, moving money from within the budget, and then what's ever left over would be we dip into the CPI fund. And I guess I understand the mayor's point that it's all in the budget now. So as far as we're just simply debating what items to include, and then after that would be where are we pulling the money from, either from the other items in the budget or from the CPI. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Patty. Um, Pauline Sumption. <laughs> With all due respect. I, I do want to point out that just because you added the CPI on the revenue side does not necessarily mean you have to add any expenditures. Instead of adding $337,000 worth of expenditures, you can take it away from the undesignated cash. So instead of using $1.7 million, we'd only use about $1.4 million. So just for that clarification, thank you. No. Thank you, Polly. Lloyd, look right, please. Thank you. Now that, now that we're back on track, um, I'm gonna. <laughs> Thanks, Lloyd. S since we're making the list, I, I'm I'm gonna try and complete it. Uh, black. I think we got Black Hills Vision up there. Yeah, we do. Uh, do we have economic development for fifty thousand. Okay. Do we have the chamber that wanted three? And CVB for eighteen thousand. And life ways for 50. I think that's all I got. Thank you, Lloyd. Um, Patty, please. Yeah. Well, as long as we're making a list and checking it twice, I guess I would like to um, add the maintenance supervisor for the Parks and Recreation Department for 69600 Thank you, Patty. Any others for the list since we're... Come on, Ron. <laughs> Any others to add to the list? This would be the unfunded list if I'm correct at this point. I mean, maybe I said that wrong. Sorry. I'd like to add some money to the uh, porta potties. As much as you want. Fifty thousand. <laughs> I'm going to make motions so we identify a board source as we go. No, we're going to go through them okay. and, and make motions and for okay. the source. 
Any others for the list? This would be the unfunded list. Ron Kroger, please. This is probably a question for um, Pauline. Karen. What it's Ron. Oh, I'm sorry. You're okay, honey. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Karen. I'm not going to add anything on the list, but I, I, I really think it's kind of hilarious that we had the discussion for CPI. We had people speak vigorously opposed to taking it, and then we start throwing, then they start throwing all the stuff on the list to be funded. And I'm going back to what Malcolm was talking about. You know, Lloyd started it out, and he had stuff he wanted to put on there, and he moved money around to do that. I think it's prudent for the individuals that made a case for the CPI that they state that I want that money taken out of CPI or otherwise give us some other funding that they want reduced. I mean, that's, you know, you can't have it both ways, in my opinion. Ron I think it's appropriate that I speak because I assume that some of these are being targeted against me. I, it's fine. I made a motion to, uh, the last time we met to, to change things without adding to the CPI. The fact is, when the council makes a decision, I, I'm going to live with it, just as I do every Monday night. Thank you, Ron. Any others to be added to the list? What we'll do is go through the list and, and um, put the funding source and then add the totals. And at that point, if I'm correct, like we usually do, we'll figure out what the total is. And if we still have to cut some or, or vote on some so we get to the total that we have, um, I think that's where we're going. Malcolm Chapman? I, I guess I just have a question about the, the, the process for how we get there. Um, obviously, I, I think the total that's been added to the budget, like, is the 337 plus, I guess, 140 or 130, the salaries and the travel. So we've added a half million dollars to the budget, and it's probably a, more than a half million dollars up there if we do just what's up there. And if the funding source is it, some people might not be using the CPI. Okay. But it, so let's just say, for instance, what we have up there is a wash. Um, but if it's not, um, and we vote as we go along, you could get to the end, and somebody really wants the porta potties, but it's no money for the porta potties. So I mean, how are we going to have a overall discussion about what's okay? Right. Before we start voting where on the, individual items, where the funding source is. Before we vote, then. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other things to be added to the list at this point? If not, we'll go through the list and um, identify funding source or where the direction is that the council member that brought it up would like to go. Lloyd LaCroix is first, if I'm correct. Yes, with destination. I, I identified 28,000 to go back to growth management to, to fund at least uh, half of the her budget that she lost for an employee and they identified it from destination downtown for the simple fact that <clears throat> when they said when they came forward what they were looking for they were just starting out this year and, and in fact he said they needed about forty six thousand dollars for destination downtown to hire on a secretary administrator so i thought 72 is more than enough for them to get started for this for next year and this would give uh, growth management a chance to instead of losing two people at least cut back to just one not completely and then wean their way off if they decide they need that one that's why I came up with that that number um, I've got other ones on there but what we were gonna wait till that comes through but that's that's my reasoning behind that so the, so the funding source was from the mayor's it's still in the mayor's budget and, and you just flipped a couple of things on yeah it. I just flipped it from one to the other thank you Lloyd Next is uh, Mayor and Council Travel. I, I think we're going to go through these to make sure that we know where the funding source is because they'll be adding, if I'm correct, they'll add the totals at the end or the motion. I guess what's easier? So 
So yours is just for a reduction and not taking, there's what, 15,000 left? Something else. Okay. And, and then the pay grades. So the funding would be, you would just create a funding source which would make us, or make that 233722 if we did, the old, put the three steps, one in 09 and two in 010. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, um, thank you, Melvin. Sorry. Sam? Yes. Uh, we have received a letter tonight Guys, I think we're going to go through the list. Um, the people are going to explain things, and then I'm, when we vote on them, I think that's when we should have the discussion on if we don't want to fund it or do, and why we, if Sam goes through his thing and Malcolm wants to have that discussion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's kind of where we're going is, is the funding source. So, And this funding source for the 25000 was from, because it was already in the budget. Am I correct, Sam? I don't know. So your funding was, you were going to, if I recall, you were going to split the wavy. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have that list down and, and that, okay. Thank you. So already has a funding source. Um, I can't see the list, Ms. <laughs> Bully. Thank you. 
Mr. Weifenbach, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I've made this motion and I'll, I'll explain where I'm going through this again. Uh, $75,000 to Black Hills Division was a pledge that we made. Uh, I think it was $325,000 over a period of five years. Uh, we're at the end of that fifth year and then uh, the $50,000 from economic development is support that we've given them in the past has been successful. Uh, they're, in, they're in the midst of change right now, change in leadership, uh, providing the dynamic uh, view for the future and I believe that's necessary to keep funding them. I think they are, they're a tool for the citizens of our, our city to help search out jobs, job opportunities for them. Uh, $20,000 to the, to the city um, attorney's office for the copier, I think is a necessity. And then uh, the $50,000 is probably a little bit too much for the porta potties. I'm going to put that at $20,000. And, and, and the, the reason I did that is I was uh, a council meeting the other day and it was brought to my attention that. Uh, okay. Okay, we'll discuss that later. But I wanted to make a change from uh, destination downtown Rapid City to move that to 2010's budget as of the Black Hills Vision, $75,000. This will be the last year for that. So I'd like to move destination Rapid City to 2010. I'd like to cut the travel budget by $20,000. And um, where does that put me? 120 and everything. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit lost on the numbers, but. But the rest of it, I wanted to come out of un un unused cash. Destination, Destination Rapid City, hundred thousand dollars. Move that. To, I wanted to move that to two thousand and ten. So. Twenty thousand. Right, I understand that, but I was I was challenged to to identify, identify what what my reasoning was and my rationale and and how I came out with these numbers. So. Yeah, from forty five to. Uh, to 20, so 25,000. No, for yeah, whatever it is from 45, that's a, the 20,000, and the rest I think is 45,000 or 65,000 from undispersed cash. Okay, so your funding source for those the travel is, is good, but you're funding the uh, economic development and. Ron, you're funding economic development in Black Hills Vision through. Destination Rapid City, moving Destination Rapid City to 2010 because 2009 is the last year that Rapid City had pledged that $75,000. So next year there'll be $75,000. So there was $75,000 for, um, I can't see your chart. If you'd move your. Okay. Which is a total of what? Okay, so you need a funding source of 165000 Thank you. Um, Pauline, next. Okay. Okay. Hold on just a second. Um, build a fingerprint technician, the funding source. My argument was if it was 300, 300 hours, do we need to even have it? I mean, can't we shift something around to, uh, I mean, once again, this really isn't our business to figure out where the money comes from. We need to set the policy and let the staff and the, and, and the mayor figure this thing out, in my opinion. I mean, we're beating ourselves up pretty good. And, uh, you know, we lost a lot of friendships last year because of this beating up of each other from, for this mere $300,000. You know, we should say, here's the policy. This is what we want to happen. Figure it out and come back with the solution for us to either say yes or no. You know, we're, we're just, <laughs> we're going through all this and we have only just a small fraction of the information that we need when we need a whole big picture and we never get the whole big picture and it's and I'm not saying anything get bad or I'm not I'm not criticizing the staff and the mayor but we don't have the big picture okay and yeah we, we went from 49 million dollars to 45 million dollars from last year Bill yeah. right now where you're going through the list and I understand where you're coming from but at well, this point well you're asking where the where the money's coming from 
Well, we had a process and everybody agreed on this process at no. this point and this, I'm just following the, the council's, um, what they wanted to do, Bill. Well, I understand that. I was just, this was my, my take and my understanding. Uh, and I was just sharing that with people. And actually this, uh, you know, I was told at some point in time there was 300 hours. And if it's 300 hours, maybe we don't need it. Thank and you. I was suggesting instead of finding money to fund it, is take that money and throw it back in the pot. Thank you. Um, what's next, please? <laughs> and that was Karen. Karen. Yes. Your funding source for the doll. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. The next one is. CPR. Thank you. Uh, maintenance parks. Yeah, um, I mean, my, um, one of the maintenance, I uh, was thinking of the through CPI. Thank you. Thanks, my other additional comment is for. Go ahead, Ms. Um, we're, uh, should we, I, I guess we, can, we don't have, uh, we're kind of getting sort of late, I suppose. Um, I would like to see this more formalized rather than having it all scribbled down on, on this kind of thing. I would like to see like a spreadsheet or something that more, more clearly identifies the numbers we're talking about, where we would like to see it pulled from, and then we can see comparison how much we're going to see out of the budget, how much we're going to take out of the CPI, and see if there's some sort of plan we can make between the both. And, and if the council would like to do that, Ms. Patty, when we find the funding sources, um, that's the council's wish. Um, that can happen. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Pauline. I skipped over 911 dispatch. 901, 911 dispatch? 50,571. And that was? I think I did that. I, no, I didn't say 50. Bill. Please. Okay. I guess uh, when what we're asking, because other people are finding the funding sources, we wanted to know where you were taking the 50,000 from. I'm, I'm probably being disrespectful to you, and I apologize. Um, I suppose if it has to come out of CIP, it comes out of CIP. CPI. Yeah, sorry. Okay, you're I'm okay a little less dexic sometimes. Uh, I'm just hoping that you know this is this is one of the things that government should be doing. I mean, if there's one thing, and that's public safety, and that's what 911 is all about. And if we have to dig, I mean, if we if we agree to all this other stuff and and uh, we we zeroize the the monies, then we then we probably need to figure out some other place to find this money. So, so your funding source is CPI, Mr. Bill? Wherever you'd like. Oh, that'd be your motion. <laughs> or not your motion, I'm sorry. That's your, fine. Thank you, sir. Um, CVB is next. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Karen. We're not on the, are we on, we're not on the parks yet, if that's okay. CVB. And that was, we already said CPI. Thank you. And likely. And likely, we're CPI. On maintenance parks. Okay. Maintenance and parks, and Patty had talked about that. I apologize, Ms. Karen. Ms. Karen had a question on. I think they're relative to port and the maintenance. Most of the things we've talked about, except for um, the one that Lloyd is talking about, are our, our, our people. And um, if they come from CPI, that's a one year choice. That's not a part of the. I mean, that's not an annual, I mean, that should be a one-time. Um, so I need to ask Pauline or someone to understand. I mean, the, he's, he wants to take 20000 as a budget, which he has identified, if I'm correct, through, Ron, I can't remember. I, I wasn't talking about Ron. Catch. I was really talking about what Patty was talking about. She was talking about the maintenance part, the park maintenance supervisor. I mean, that'll be an ongoing position. We're going to have to fund that every year. But this year it's coming out. So is out. that the appropriate? That's so it, that's not an, in my view. That pro, and I'm, I'm asking because I don't know for sure. It doesn't seem to me that CPI is the right place to fund that yeah, from true. because that is a um, not a one-time expense. That will be an annual expense. Okay. So, so would you like to cross that off the list? Is that what you're saying? Oh. I'm not suggesting crossing off the <laughs> list. I'm just saying. Okay. When that comes up, we can vote okay. on that. Okay. Thank you. Action. Thank you, Madam Chair. Pauline, in, in reference to Karen Gunderson Olson's question, CPI, once we take it, that's a permanent okay. fixture. So, yeah, yeah, yeah no, what we take today is permanent. It'll be there forever. Yeah, so. 
Yes. Yep. It's 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 like putting it's it's there forever. Um, oh, answer it. So, well, in other words, a salary is an appropriate part. So, when we add a salary as a part of this discussion, that's an appropriate discussion in terms of it, uh, of the fact that we've decided to take the CPI. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That's really what I wanted to know. Can I have a follow-up question? <laughs> so what we're really thank you. So what we're really saying here is, is that we're adding an FTE to this to this uh, to what we're doing here because that's you're you're saying we're adding an FTE for this year, and then we'll worry about funding it the following years after that. Right, and we can always talk about that discussion. Um, Pauline, thank you, Madam Chair. Just to clarify, like Alderman Weifenbach said, the CPI is an ongoing thing. It's not one-time money. If you want to look at what um, items that should be funded with one-time money, one-time money are such things as land sales. And so if you need a piece of equipment at that time, take the land sale money and put it towards that. Or if it's a one-time you know, one funding where it's not going to be a continual thing, that's what you need to look at as a funding source for, for unfunded items. So if she's looking for a funding source, what you're saying is it probably needs to come out of something that you're switching in the mayor's budget instead of a CPI? No? Okay. Yeah. CPI is ongoing money. It's not one-time money. Right. Whereas like a land sale would be one-time money. Once it's spent, it's okay. it'll be gone, but the CPI will get every year. I, I understand that, but I apologize because <coughs> that when we get to that discussion, that will come up. Um, Bill Krepke, please. Okay. Um, I think at this point, if we could take a break, Council, and then come back and have this broke out in totals and um, where Mayor's budget is, and then unless the Council has a suggestion at this point that they would like to do something different. Um, Malcolm, please. Yeah, I, I'd like to do something different. I'd like to, um, I mean, if, if we've had all of those things explained and maybe questions answered, I, I would almost recommend that we go home because I think Patty made a wonderful suggestion to say, I can't, I mean, we've got money up there on the board competing against other money, so I wouldn't feel comfortable voting. Sam's motion was to decrease the travel <coughs> budget by 15000 which also impacts someone else's, some, uh, some somewhere else up there, someone else used the travel money to do it as well. So we're, we're, we're talking about the same pots of money uh, that we're potentially talking about cutting. So it, it's hard to follow up here like this. So I think Patty's suggestion of putting it on a spreadsheet, putting it up here, when we move it, we can actually see where the dollars are going and where they're coming from. Okay. So at, at the end of this conversation, I'm not prepared to vote on any of these things. I'm okay. not. I think that we should have the finance office then prepare this in some sort of spreadsheet, look at it, and then vote on that. Okay. And I guess I was... No, it's not a mo It's just I we're taking a break now because I didn't get... We didn't answer ask questions yet. Okay. And if the break was for to kind of break that out, and if we needed to do that, Malcolm, that could be the motion and at least we'd have the list, and then we can move that around and bring that to the next session if that's what you're wanting. But at this point, if we could just take a break, uh, like a 10-minute break, and then come back. Do we Thank get you. to ask questions then? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> I do. A lot of them. <laughs> ten minutes huh? would be uh, ten to nine. Council, Chicago. please. I got big shoulders. I can hit. Come on, man. Jackie did when she called you. Didn't I know me? Come across my arm. Yeah. Look at that. We made it. We hit. We made um. I like Glacier better than Yellowstone. I like Glacier. Oh, Glacier. I like, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good in Yellowstone. I mean, I like Yellowstone. I mean, I do. 
Why? <laughs> well, I mean, people said I'm things. I'm going to beat you up every time you ask me a question, Mark. Rock, come on, man. I, I think at the end of the day, you come still on, like me, though. I love, I love everybody. It's good you for you. Like I won the debate. That's, that's the end of the day. Her and I went toe-to-toe. We walked away and we I beat my son up all the time, but I tell him the end game is that I love him, and I, so I, I, I'm just when still loving him. the debate, that's when I have a problem. And when we have the debate, and everything comes out, and, and we either support it or deny it, we live with it. You know, there's so many, when I said, you know, we're beating ourselves up trying to find this money. Yeah, it's cool. That's, that's horse, that's horse punch. You know, there's things in there, if we said, now, Mayor, I really want you to dig deep. I mean, I just did. I, I've gone through the bunches. I mean, I've I went through it. I've gone through a second. couple of things. Yeah. Yeah. If we dress your, and we can move that money around now if you want, yeah. we can put this. I don't think people are ready. I'm not ready to. I'm I'm gonna, I'm that's just my opinion. Okay. You see, that's no, just I my opinion. Today earlier, you don't want to deal with the I, we, I mean, I'm we don't mean to be argumentative to you, Dad. You're, you're not yeah, you are. No, you're, <laughs> you're not hurting me. Me? Well, and I'm not frustrated today. I'm just, no, you're doing I'm just really listening. Well, doing but the mayor, so I'm going to tell the mayor right now not to put all that stuff up. Because it's happening. That's why he gave a break. Yes, and he has the computer that's doing all this for us right now. If you want to flip it around now. I appreciate you bringing it up too. He was I'm frustrated when he question questioned me. System and I just think that's the mayor? So, yeah. so you guys oh. would like to think on this? I mean, oh, absolutely. He didn't put it in the. You want to think on this? So I've this got point, questions, though. So my questions are going to ask. I mean, they're going to lead to more questions. That's the part that has So, can I ask you something? Yeah. So, from here, maybe we just need to ask the questions. We're, it's the same stuff. Stop. We're going to get to the same end. The, the motion that I made last week about that stuff to fund, that's the stuff we're going to end so up So, why don't you make a motion before we start all this? And yeah, no, no, no. We you already did go through the paces. I made a motion two weeks ago. So, I'm not going to make the motion again. So, we're not going to do anything? Uh, yeah, I've got questions to ask about what my colleagues did. Yeah, I mean, I've got questions to ask about what, what they put on the board. Okay, so let's do the questions on things that are on the board instead of moving the money around tonight. Oh, no, no, we can, but I still have questions on it. We can move it around, but I mean, I still have some questions. I disagree with some of the basic principles of what people say because I don't think it's true. Okay. So, I've got questions. So, well, Sam said some things I don't, I don't think are really yeah. Well, most about of us have done the one. You, you put it, but you put it in perspective. Okay. We're talking Tell about me. stuff we don't have answers to. Yeah, but I think we're fine. I, I think we're fine. Where you going? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Oh yeah, we can. No, 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 no. I, no, I didn't say that. So what was wrong in this thing? No, no, I didn't say that. Bill, you need to come over. I'm taking suggestions because this is a team thing. It's not about just me. I would recommend sure. Let's put a, let's put them up there, and then I still think people aren't ready to vote. And then have a discussion on those items. Sure. That not ready to vote. If we get to an end that we can vote tonight, I mean, yeah, let's vote. But I don't know. How long are we going to go tonight? Oh. I didn't put it into it. Oh. You know, the thing is, the council will make the vote today. I think it's a good thing to put it on the board. I'm going to go all night long and get it done with the board. If you want to make that suggestion, <coughs> You know, you know there's, there's things in there. I mean, remember remember this gal that, uh, what's her name? Pamela? Pamela or something? Oh, she, Patricia. Yeah, Patricia. No. Yeah, she's in there. She's in there. Now, how many other positions and how many other well, I think some people think that. that. I think that some people think that I make my Yeah, and we don't know that. Point. And that was my point. We should say, well, this is what we want to get funded. Well, no, we well, didn't let us do this on the front end. When we, we go through this, first we had a funding source. So this is out. the funding no, source. You're come now back it's a discussion well, this is, in motion time. If this is what you, you want. want. I made a discussion in motion. We don't have the discussion. We don't have the We don't have the I mean, our our general fund is to say the word. I think I can't be part of the conversation. That's our job. That's our job as policy makers. If they want to get They're the administration. Then I can do the same thing. We set the policy. I don't they want to be the plan. But now they can come back and say, well, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. In order so to you don't buy into their plan that they put forth. Who's the mayor? It's always no, no, no. Okay. no I'm not that wrong. Okay. 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 There's got to be some more insight there. I mean, I'll, it's I'm not going to you know, do we want to, I'm going to look at that they have one in the front, they say, what, because I didn't want to Yeah, that's a couple of years. A couple of times. I mean, if people tell me after the vote's over, leave it alone, then they come back. Yeah, I've looked through. I think the mayor's done a pretty good job. Well, I didn't say that. No, I mean, I do. I, 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 I don't know where you find a lot of cuts. I'm ready to Further cuts. So why are you bringing this in? I'm not city is like, have cut in the job. You know that. You know that. I didn't put oh, that. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, at this point, we're going through what we're going through. We sit back See, if I were Karen yeah. Waltman, I would come here and argue, okay, we just lost shields and targets. So are you going to have destination and rush more more and give me $100,000 to find the people? Then we vote on that. That's hugely yeah. But, but, I'm but, but it's not. How is it different? This is, shakes out. this is not compost. This is not compost. So what shakes out? So what I'm doing now is a discussion for the whole. Now that we have funding source, we're going to have discussion on this item. And if there's motion to make, do we let the motion go? That's bad. I don't disagree with that. I don't, I mean, I don't disagree that they're different, but I'm just saying, so we're, we're trying to create this area downtown that's vibrant. And, and at the risk of letting something over there fall by the way. I just understand what that something else is, but I don't know. And maybe there is room for that to go by the same. I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't they didn't justify. I mean, I, I'm for destination. But they didn't justify it. Why they didn't get like they, they get $100,000. I mean, did they, did they come up with this? Oh, yeah. We did this with Asa. We made them. Where's your proposal? Your, your business plan? You didn't ask us for that. And, and I'm in the same pool, but uh, we, we don't play the same way. We, we, we play differently with well, different people. That's true. One is, I think they're entirely different. I, 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 think, I, think it's, I think it's entirely different between that and that. I can't get it. We're doing it like, you know, it's, it's frustrating. It'll get better. Better. It'll get better. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, Lloyd's the only one that said that. Well, I mean, maybe. And, and, uh, he took it all over. Right. <laughs> I should go use it. Yeah, I gotta go to it. You just say, okay, well, we can do that. Those are some of those numbers. Check that out. I just think it's hilarious when you look at the, the deal of PEI. They, they put it in late. Nah, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs>
That's not from me. Malcolm? Yes, ma'am. Malcolm? Sorry. Um, in August 4th, 2008, we approved a compensation plan where we all agreed. And there's some 22 and higher on this co compensation plan. Yep. Okay. Yep. Just people oh, I got questions. Okay. This is, I don't think people knew that. And I'll, I've been shown they don't know. Just last week. I booked Yeah. Oh, I know. Yes. Those are the minutes? No, well, they're just, there's just some of the stuff that on with the old. Some of the minutes. Did we used to get the minutes of the meetings? This is not all the minutes or anything. I just wanted to know what we approved on some of it. And I had time to look through them. I mean, I can't remember every one of these, but there's 22 that they approved for. And, on the, and the council just, and everybody, I think it passed the end. And now today we want to switch, but it's just like it's wrong. Lloyd's fault. <laughs> if we're, Pauline, are you guys ready? I'm blaming everything on Lloyd. Okay. Hello. My wife's still mad at you. Oh, is, man. Is this on? <laughs> this is on. Okay, council. We're a few minutes over if we could start. You know, I saw her. I said, Pam, what are you mad at me for? She said, I'm not mad at you. You've been talking to Lloyd. <laughs> Okay, we do have a spreadsheet on there. It sounds like the council wishes us to go through these and have discussion on them and then vote. So if we could have the full council, we can go ahead and start, and that would start with Destination Rapid City and Growth Management. And the discussion on Destination Rapid City Growth Management to put 72000 out of the mayor's budget, if I'm correct. Um, actually, all of it's coming out. We're switching growth management to 28,000 out of the 100,000 that was funded and 72 to Destination Rapid City. Um, discussion on this issue. Lori DeCroix. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm not sure what further down is, but I put it up there is if I want to, we can make motions now. Yes, sir. My motion would be to. to My motion would be to take 28000 from Destination Rapid City from the mayor's budget and supply half of the, the uh, employee for growth management. And that's where I'm getting at. Okay. Thank you. Instead of the original budget was to take two people, which would be 56000 So that'd be given one back. So Is there a second on this motion, please? Is there a second? Thank you. Discussion on this motion. Sam Quaker. Um, I would like to ask um, Marsh Elkins, our growth management director, a question. If this motion passes in, uh, and I believe it funds half an FTE, Lloyd? One, she's actually losing two. This would give her back one. So that, does it? would this give you a full FTE back? I think the salary, it would cover the salary and the benefits we would figure out a way to cover. Okay, so it, it would allow for one? One. Okay, that's what I need to know. Thank, Thank you. you, Sam. Bill O'Krepke, please. Th Thank you very much. Uh, you know, we're talking about adding an FTE, a couple of FTEs here. Uh, and if that's the case, and we're saying, well, it's going to be part of the CPI, CIP, <laughs> CIP, and you're saying the C... CPI, you had it right the first Was time. Was that really? Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Here, wait a second. Hold on. You're C not the, C P you're not the okay. only one that yeah, I got it right now. <clears throat> and so what you're, what you're suggesting is, and, and, we're, and we're talking about, we have another, the uh, maintenance supervisor parks, and we're saying that this is going to be funded by the CPI. And the CPI is an ongoing thing, and so it's okay. So does that mean if we say we have $100,000 with the two with the two positions does that mean does that mean next year we only have two hundred thousand dollars in the cpi um because the hundred thousand is in the mayor's budget for destination rapid city and he's suggesting that twenty eight thousand of that hundred thousand and goes okay, to okay. all right okay. well let, let me I'm, I'm sorry thank you uh, let Bill, me, sorry i didn't know <laughs> well that's knew. okay i'm just making a the point is it could be dollar it could be a hundred thousand dollars the point is is that if we're saying that we're taking it out of the CIP as on a regular ongoing basis, does that mean it's going to be next year is going to be reduced 
that in, that that amount of money that we've set aside for the CPI. So in other words, if we have three hundred thousand dollars next year for the CPI, and we've we've said between this, okay, it's sixty nine thousand, seventy thousand. So if we're authorized an additional three hundred thousand dollars next year for CPI, we're going to subtract that seventy thousand dollars we put in this year. So now we've only got two hundred and thirty thousand. Well, wait a second. How, how does it work? Paul, in assumption, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. That $337,000 that you took this year, you will get that again next year. Plus, you'll get growth on top of the 12.2 or 12.5 million total. So you will have a whole new calculation for CPI next year, but you'll always have that 337 out there. That, that's a little bit of the confusing. Th thank you, but that's confusing the issue. I could have said 337, or I could say 350,000, but we're, we're expecting that we have, we'll have that whole 350 or whatever that CPI is going to be next year to be able to use just like we did this year. And if we're going to say, okay, go ahead, Mayor. Helen Hanks, please. Just so you know, once you add the CPI, it becomes part of the base every single year. So that $330,000 actually becomes part of the base next year. So once you adopt, and, and, and uh, which you already have, saying that you're going to take the CPI, you will automatically get that from every year forward. That is added to the base. So I, you, I hope that helped. I'm sorry. Lloyd LaCroix, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I guess my whole reason behind this is I think this is, to lose two people in one department is a big hit all at once. That's why my suggestion was enough to get keep one on, see how it goes by, for next year's budget. I identified a funding source and my reasoning behind it, and that was the mayor's budget. That's where I'm at with this. Is I think it's a hard hit to lose two people in one year when they automatically say they're overstaffed. I say we know break it down, then next year when it comes back, then we can relook at it again. <clears throat> that's where I identified the, the funding source, and that's my feeling on, I, I just think it's tough to lose two. I'm not talking about adding. We've got, they're already with us, and, and it's a tough blow for a department to, to take someone and transfer them somewhere else. We have a motion and a second. Um, any other discussion on, thank you, Ms. Karen. Um, Jackie, the motion, please. And if I'm correct, Ms. Jackie, the funding source is already identified in the mayor's budget. Yeah. Would that be your motion? Jackie, did you get that? Thank you, Ms. Jackie. Ron, Karen, follow up, please. I'm not unsympathetic to Lloyd's suggestion, but there's one thing I think that we at least should address, and that is the fact that after a number of years of not being able to figure out how it is that downtown has the, can grow, everyone wanted downtown to grow and expand, and suddenly, time seems just right. I mean, it's kind of like the stars have aligned. And I guess $100,000 seems to me a way of saying, yes, downtown, you are doing the right thing. Um, the things that they've done that they've never had before, that have never come together is, they now have a relationship with, um, they now have an organizational body capable of really um, raising large sums of money. They have the people who are large property owners in a cooperative um, stance with those who are the retailers and who lease those spaces in buildings. Uh, that's a, a, a cooperative spirit that hasn't always been present. Um, and in view of the um, immense opportunity that I think that $100,000 offers, I mean, I think it says to, the, to those folks, yes, we are the real cheerleaders for what you're doing. 
and that we believe in what you're doing and that we, are, we support the whole concept of this strong capital improvement organization, which is Rapid City Destination. Um, it's not a tourism activity. It is a capital investment organization. And they have, they have built a board that now includes um, Rapid City Downtown, which strengthens the position of Rapid City Downtown, whose challenge always has been that they are largely those who lease properties. And um, the opportunity to have um, higher sales, higher land, land values, therefore rents that are increasing rather than decreasing, we all know that the second floors of most of those buildings are highly unutilized. And with this effort, and uh, I think 100000 is a modest am amount of money, so I guess I have to make a pitch that this is the moment when the stars are aligned. You have the retailers, the property owners, together on the same place in the page saying, let's move forward. And that's a powerful um, stance to be in in terms of downtown. And I guess... <coughs> I don't disagree with Lloyd, and if this is going to go away, I mean, I'd rather have $75,000 than no money. I mean, I talked to the folks and said, um, if there's a discussion in which this, bit, this budget is decreased, do you go away? Are you incapable of doing anything if you have less than $100,000? Um, I mean, I don't honestly believe they will go away. But on the other hand, this is a modest investment in what has the potential to be a huge area of growth. And so I guess I'm pitching that we find the, you know, that we leave the 25,000 additional dollars, there are 28, I guess, there, and try to find that some other place. But on the other hand, I don't want to lose the 75 either. So. Malcolm Chapman, please. I missed some of what Karen was saying, but I think I caught the gist of it, and I, and I agree with her that the stars are aligned, and I think for downtown to grow and prosper and be vibrant, um, <laughs> you've got to have those owners of buildings involved in this, and they are. They're at the table, not just the, the tenants anymore, like she said. Um, and I think that for this to happen, that the city has to be involved and has to be in a leadership role and one of the ways, I think if we tried to do this downtown plan by ourselves, it would fall on its face. We can be a catalyst by providing resources, providing money, but if we had to do it, it, would, it wouldn't work. So we've got people in place to do that. So I, I would agree, let's not um, cut the money. And then I have another issue, I think, with this, because it seems like on the surface that we're not adding any employees, but we are. <clears throat> you can't do this plan without adding employees because my understanding is that two employees um, that Marsha would be losing will now go, maybe the, the same two won't, but one employee will go to finance and one employee will go to IT. Those other two employees that Marsha would be losing, the, the actual people would find homes somewhere else in the city. So. If we do this and we put one back with Marsha, we actually have to go out and hire someone to put back with Marsha or leave one of them there and hire someone for IT or hire someone for finance. So the proposal that Lloyd has put out here is actually adding an FTE. It's not just the direct transfer of two people that stay within the city. So we're adding a new person to the budget. So my recommendation is that we would vote down this proposal of um, of, of taking money from Destination Rapid City for those two reasons. One, it's a tipping point for downtown, and two, I think we'd be adding uh, an FTE right now. Thank you, Malcolm. Any more discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Up, all opposed? No. no. Um, roll call, please, Jackie. Martinson. Adcock? Take money out? No. Deb, your vote was? Sorry, no, please. 
Kukrecki? No. Chapman? No. Weifenbach? No. Olson? No. Kroger? No. Quaker? Aye. LaCroix? Aye. That motion fails. Okay. Um, that motion fails, and we go on to Mayor and um, Bill Krepke, please. Thank you very much. I, I, Lloyd's got some good points. And maybe, and I don't know where we can find the, the monies and where we can find the additional whatever we need to do. But I voted no because I didn't want you to take it away from Destination Rapid City. If there's another place to find the money, I would certainly, I would certainly support what you're trying to do. Uh, you know, growth management, if we're in the growth management business and, and if the Rapid City is growing, then we need to support what they're doing over there. Uh, so I'm not opposed to adding another FTE to replace or to an additional one to help replace some of the ones that are being moved around. Uh, I just hope we can find another uh, another source. So I'd like to encourage the group to say, let's not throw it off the, off the radar screen. Uh, maybe there's another way we can finance it. Thank, Thank you. you, Bill. Next is um, Mayor and Council Travel from 30,000. I'm sorry, take 15,000 off it, if I'm correct, and make it to 30,000. And was the total, can I ask one question, was the total on mayor and council budget this year for travel, was it 45000 Yes. Thank you, sir. Keep in mind, look at the last line item also. I want to take both of those together because you have mayor and council travel on the bottom for taking it from from up top from 30 to 20. So you're actually, you, have, you actually have it listed there twice. Um, I, or we can just go through just like Destination Rapid City, there might be a different motion. Thank you, sir. Um, Sam, did you have a motion? Yeah, I do. Thank you. Um, to further discussion along, I'm going to... Sam. Yeah. I, just I, the, I, no, I just the mic. Right no, oh. I'm sorry, just the sorry. mic. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm going to offer a motion to take the Mayor Council travel budget from 45000 to 20000 and take the $25,000 and put it in the police department budget as two line items. One line item of $18,750 for Wavy and the other line item for $6,250 for Front, Front Forge Coalition. And that is my motion. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Um, discussion on that motion. Bill Krep, if you're first, please. Thank you. You know, we're just throwing numbers around. What, is, what does that mean? as far as travel goes. I mean, we're saying we're, we're going from 45,000 down to 30,000. 20,000. From 45 to 20, so it's over half. What does that mean as far as travel for, for, for us? Does that allow us to go on one trip only? Does it allow us to go on one and a half trips? Or, or what, does that, what does that mean? Okay, so that means all of us have the opportunity to go on just one trip a year. Alan Hanks, please. My suggestion is knowing what the airline tickets are, and, and uh, if you're talking about going to the National League of Cities event, I do not believe $20,000 will get all the council to that. Knowing what we pay to attend these meetings, paying for the lodging, paying for the, for the registration, paying for the airline tickets, it's well above $2,000 to actually attend a function. So at $20,000 each, there would not be enough money in this budget for all 10 of the council members to uh, attend one National League of Cities event. So you're saying 2000 uh, 2000 a person that's, per trip? I think that's actually low. I don't think you can do it for that. Well, the, I guess the point is, instead of saying a, 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 a number of, say, 30000 if we have an idea what it typically costs for one person to make one trip and then multiply that times 10 that or 11, that, that'll give you an opportunity to, because not all of us are going to go to Washington or the other one, which will give us money if we want to go to Pier and those, those kinds of places, and that should equal out, and that should be pretty close, rather than just saying 30000 So my, rec my, my request would be, what's a typical cost? Multiply times 11, and that's what the budget is. Do you have a substitute motion, Mr. Okrepke? Well, that would be it. I, can, I, can, I think I can give you an idea of what we spent. I believe in 2007, 
uh, on council travel, mayor's uh, travel, I think we spent about $42,000. And, and the point is we've made more than one trip a year. So if we're, some, if, some folks did. Yeah. So, if, so if, if it's our policy that we're setting up right now is to only have one trip a year, then we need to fund that one trip a year. Then what I would, my suggestion would be, uh, figure uh, $3,000 times 11, and then add in some additional funding uh, if you want to go, say, to the South Dakota Municipal League meeting, because that's also, uh, a lot of folks uh, attend that meeting. And so, there again, just keep in mind, you're taking a budget from roughly about 60, 65,000, and the motion on the floor would take it down to $20,000. Well, I would certainly caution the, the the, the council to be careful on cutting the travel budget that much. Uh, <coughs> education is way too important for all of us, and I'm and I'm hoping that we can at least budget enough for at least one trip. And if it's three thousand, that's thirty-three thousand dollars. And if you have municipal league, that's another you know thirty-three, another couple of thousand, so thirty-five thousand. I would make a motion that we don't that we cut it down or no lower than thirty thirty-five thousand dollars. So your substitute motion would be to take it to 35,000. Okay. Um, there's been a substitute motion from um, 45,000 to cut to 20 and break that down to take it to 35,000 bill. Is there discussion on the motion at 35,000? Is there a second? I'm sorry. Is there a second on the motion? Um, we're just seconding a motion of 35,000 right now, Patty. Uh, there's a second for discussion on the motion, Patty, right now is to take the budget to 35,000, and it's a substitute motion on travel. Patty, please. Yes, ma'am. While I am a little uncomfortable about knocking down the travel budget to 20,000, feeling that we might cut ourselves at the knees um, as, far, as far as travel goes, I, mean, if some, I would support it for this year if it funds the uh, Fund for Coalition and Wavy, and we can always increase the budget down the line next year if it proves that we really are hamstringing ourselves as far as, and you know, improving you know our own education and experience as a city council. And I'm not speaking as a newbie because I know every, um, going on a trip would have a very real value to any city council member and to the city as a whole. So. <laughs> I guess I'm not supporting the 35, the to 35,000, but I would support Sam's original motion. Thank you. Um, Lloyd DeCroix, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I guess I'm not, I respect what people are trying to do, but I'm not in support of reducing it anymore. I think the mayor did a good job on this. He averaged out what we, what's been used, and he did reduce it down and kept it about where it is. We have a resolution on the books saying we will put enough money in the book, in the budget, so every council member and mayor can go to the spring and fall National League of Cities. I mean, we do have a, a resolution in the books on that. We funded it that way. And, and I think it's fair. And we do have a policy set to where if you think that travel is in excess, you know, you have to go through the council president and the mayor for anything above and beyond those and in front of the council. So it, the council has a say if you can go or not. I mean, so I don't know why we're reducing it. I mean, if we can look back, it, it's done. We're going to have new council members. They need to learn what's going on. So I, I don't support uh, shortening it now. I mean, uh, we're going through this, and I think everybody's got a list of stuff that we want to go through. Uh, and I don't think this is a high priority to be cut, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd. Um, next in line, please. Raise your hand. Ron Kroger, thank you, Ron. Pauline, somewhere in our papers here, you provided uh, everybody uh, the history of constant travel. Do you have a clue where that's located at? In the small binder, it's the first page behind the other tab. This binder? Yes, thank you. Behind the first tab? <coughs> behind the other tab it's oh, the first tab. page and the other tab is the very last tab say, say that again please Paul. under the other, other tab <laughs> which is the very last tab in your small binder the first page the word that says other that's what you meant i was trying to figure other tab 
Well, and that's, that's why you didn't bring it up. Other? You have more tabs than I do. Right here. What's it under? It's not the back. Under other. Under other. Can you have different tabs? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Well, you might want to get off. But anyhow, I, I, and that has a history. I, I'm still not finding it, but. Uh, right there. What's it under? Oh, okay. I mean, you know, you go back to 2005, we spent $17,000. And in 2008, our budget is what? Is that 45000 or did we, no, some of that was cut out of there. It's almost 60000 for 2008. I, you know, I, I can certainly, certainly support a motion uh, that takes us down to $25,000, somewhere in that area. Uh, yeah, to go, if you look at the history here, 14000 11000 17000 all of a sudden 37000 45000 2008 60000 uh, That's a heck of a hunk. And, and I know the mayor on his budget went back to department heads a second time after he went through the budget and asked for more cuts. <coughs> and we're not even looking at those, we're just going to let those slide by. So the department heads have taken a double whack and this council needs to sit back and take a, a little bit off of their, um, off of what they're taking out of this piece of pie and put it on something that's more worth, worthwhile than council travel. Thank you, Ron. Any other discussion? Uh, it's at 35,000 at this point. Right. And I'd like, I, do we have a motion? Do we, when yes. We've had a second. The substitute in the second. Um, Bill made a substitute at 35. Karen made a second. And that was to take it down to 35,000. That's what we're discussing right now. And, I, and, I, and I'll just w make one more comment on, on council travel. You know, back in 97, uh, Actually, I don't know if it was policy, but normally what took place back then was it was either it was constant leadership that went on on uh, these conferences, and the mayor and council leadership come back in '97 or '98 and thought it was well worth having all the council be able to attend those, and I, I think probably the vote was unanimous to to be be able to allow all the council members to attend these conferences. And I've, and I've been to my share, and I, and I think they're well worth it. But I can tell you, if you go back, you know, to 2005 or whatever it was, we had good representation going to those council, uh, those conventions, and all of a sudden to double and triple the budget on, on them is going way out of line. So I, I, I kept quiet over the last year when we talked about council travel, but I think at this point in time uh, it's appropriate to definitely cut cut it down. Do you have a second substitute, Ron? Let you yeah, if there's room for a second substitute, I'll, I'll, I'll say 25000 Thank you. We have had a second substitute motion by Ron Kroger. Is there a second? There's a second. On Ron made the motion and Sam the second on 25000 Next in line would be Ron Weifenbach and then Bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I don't have a calculator, but it would be interesting to take 17630 and add 3% to it for 2006, 2007, 2008, and 2009. Tell me what that number is. I mean, if it's 25,000, I would support the motion. Uh, 17,630 in 2005. If we take 3% and add it to that number, and then in 2006 add 3%, and 2007 add 3%, and come up with a number I could support. If that number is 25,000, I could support that number. I think all the uh, Kroger makes a valid okay. argument. Seventeen thousand six hundred and thirty in two thousand five. So if you add three percent to that, and then three percent the next two three years. If we can come back to that, um, Ron, that would be good. Um, when they have the answer, if they could just um, tell us. Um, I was Bill Krepke, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That came to about twenty thousand. Sorry to interrupt you, Bill. I got about 18. Anyway, the something that we have to remember here, and I can certainly understand where Alderman Kroger's going, and and and, so, and some of the others. 
The problem is, is that you got the mayor's travel on there too. And right now we are in the, in the hunt to, uh, to convince our congressional delegation to support us on some very, very important matters that we've got going. And to limit his travel or dip into contingencies to make that happen, I think is, uh, I think it's unwise. Whether we go or not, you know, that's, that's another story. But I think that by going to 25,000, I don't know, divide 25,000 by three, I, anybody have that? Okay, so eight, eight people can go. So, so you're talking about eight trips then. Now, that includes all of us plus the mayor's travel. And eight trips, when we're trying to go and, and, and convince our congressional delegation and others on the Hill to give us some money to help support us on, on the water and our sewer and uh, those kinds of things. And I think we're making a big mistake by tying our hands as much as we are. I think 35 is probably the appropriate number, but you know that's we'll see how the votes go. But his, but the mayor's travel is coming out of this number too, and if there's only, and if we go 25, that's only eight trips. I'm not so sure if that's a very wise number to take. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to take the travel budget to 25,000, and it was a second substitute. Any discussion? Malcolm Chapman. I understand, I think, what the council is trying to do if, if there have to be cuts made in the city, that the council should be a part of those cuts as well. And I think in a responsible manner, the, the mayor looked at that and said, well, reason, truly, what is the council <coughs> spending on, on all of this travel? And I mean, that number came to be about $45,000 or 40 some odd thousand dollars. So that's what the mayor put in the budget because that's realistic. I, I think it's problematic. I didn't hear tied to this budget that uh, what that's saying is that y you can only take one trip. We do supplemental appropriations all the time. So if we come to June and all of that money's gone and there's a trip that needs to be taken to, as Bill said, to go talk to our congressional delegation or someone finds something that they want to go to, I think it's even more problematic to then come back and say we're taking a supplemental appropriation for uh, travel, specifically for travel. The council travel budget, like every other budget, has been a contributor to returning funds to the council. Last year, we didn't say that the council turned back $17,000 to the city. It said the council set a record for travel. So I, I think I look at it different ways. One of the things that we're going to discuss a little bit later, and one of the things that I think people got excited about was, and I'm not trying to bump up the council versus anyone else on the list, but I guess in terms of how I think, is the CVB. They came here and they said, you know, we are one of the one things around here that there's a return on investment. And as a result, you should fund us more. And I think the council probably will do that because they put heads and beds around here and people come to our community and generates more sales tax. Well, because we've gone to conferences, I mean, Lloyd, and I say it again and again, Lloyd came back with an idea about budgeting that we challenged some things last year, that there's a direct savings of $90,000 that Jerry shared with us through a spreadsheet to say because of this idea, there's a 90 real savings in city funds because of an idea that he learned. Um, we just generated, and I say we because the council approved working on the National League of Cities coming here, based on the multipliers that the CVB uses, we just generated an additional fifty to $55,000 for this community because we've made the investment of sending people and uh, efforts to the National League of Cities that they then reinvested in us to come here. I think what we're doing is a mistake. Um, I would say leave the money in the budget if we don't use it all. And if you look at the numbers to date so far, those numbers aren't on track to be the same as they were last year. So the council has self-policed itself in terms of travel. I think that this is some philosophical argument that let's take away from travel 
that's not rooted in anything that's real, <coughs> that's rooted in something that someone wants to win a debate about travel. I won't support the motion on the floor. I think it's, we have cut that travel budget now by 40% from what the mayor proposed to where it's going. Um, I think that's a mistake. I think that shows our community as that somehow we're falling backwards, just like if we're going to have this discussion about cutting someone's salary around here, potentially you don't get good people then if everyone starts to realize that Rapid City's cutting salaries. Um, as always, I will abide by whatever the council does, but I think it's a mistake if we cut the budget. Those are my comments. Thank you, Malcolm Chapman. Ron Kroger, please. I don't disagree with Malcolm that there definitely is a return on investment. I, I truly believe that there is, but uh, I'm fumbling through this book again to the other and I can't find it. But somewhere, somewhere we have a piece of paper that shows what the travel was for all the department heads. And I don't know if it's on that one or not, but the fact of the matter is there's 10 of, a, how many employees are there, 600 and some? 700. 701 employees and the 10 of us are second in the city budget for travel. There's a lot of very important departments that work for the city. And I think it's truly just as important to send them to get education as it is us. And, and I know the police department is first, and I think uh, the city council is second, and the fire department was third, somewhere in that area there. We were budgeted for $60,000 this year, and the mayor pr is proposing 45, he's decreasing it. I think, it, and if you go back historically over what we've used, and the council has been able to attend in the past, basically the conferences that they wanted. Mayor Hanks was on their council with me when we were spending $17,000 and we went on a number of trips together, in including other council members. <laughs> trips that can't remember gave either. us the city return. Scott's gone? Okay, but anyhow, gave us the <laughs> But, you know, I, this I, is streaming I, think audio. Do, I think we do need to move on, but, uh, you know, I, I think $25,000 is more than enough. And, and somewhere down the line in, in January or February or June or July, and we're out of money for travel and something that is extremely important, I feel pretty confident that the council would find money out of council contingency to have the mayor or whoever go on a trip to try and do something good for the city or Rapid City. I feel very confident about that part. So. And I'm very confident that we can get by with $25,000 in travel. I have no plans on taking a trip this year. Uh, and I know a no number of other council members have no plan either. And to have $45,000 in the travel budget, I think, is, is not realistic. Thank you. Thank you, Ron Kroger. Any more discussion? The motion on the floor is to take travel down to $25,000. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Um, roll call, Jackie. Santa? Aye. O'Kripke? No. Fatman? No. Weissenbach? Aye. Olson? No. Kroger? Aye. Quaker? Aye. McCroy? No. Martinson? Aye. That motion carries five to four. Five to four, for it was twenty-five thousand. Was the motion? Twenty-five. Thank you, um, Ron Kroger. Please. It it passed five to four. I do have something on a different item. I I just noticed that on our last vote, Destination Rapid City is back to the hundred thousand dollars and uh, the twenty-eight thousand or whatever it was for uh, growth management has disappeared. I would like to make a motion that we uh, put $28,000 back into growth management to come out of the CIP or CPI. Bill's got me doing that now. CPI. Okay. There's been a motion to put the 28000 back um, and probably should have done that back then. So we'll, leave, we'll put some leeway because it was on there and I didn't make it as a separate item. So I apologize. So the motion is to put the 28000 with the funding source CPI um, back in the in the category so 
we'll go back to the growth management and that would be on the floor <coughs> of funding um, that through CPI. I just, can I make one comment? Yes, sir. If you go out there and look at it, everything that's listed there uh, currently, if we were to fund everything up there, we still, and do the changes that are on there, we would still have 212,000 uh, available for other things. Thank you, and she is keeping that list. So the motion would be to fund growth management, the 28,000 through CPI. Is there a second? Lloyd, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you second. Lloyd second the motion. Discussion? With no discussion, all in favor of funding the um, growth management through uh, the CPI? Malcolm Chapman. I, I guess I have a, so are we actually putting the funds, are we just talking about putting the funds up there? Like, I mean, before we started with this list, are we creating the list over or are we actually voting on to put the money there from a certain place and then we're moving on. Right. We are moving on after we put it in the CPI. At this point, they are keeping a tally. I'm just putting it back on the list. I didn't realize it would go off after. We're actually making motions on these these items at this point. Okay. So motion. Through CPI. Through CPI. And there's a second by yeah, Lloyd. The money to come from the yeah. Okay. Is there a Discussion on that motion. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with the process. So when we voted the first time to, to not do what Lloyd wanted, we we didn't we weren't voting on growth management. We were just voting on voting, voting on his motion to take it out of that um, twenty-eight thousand from that hundred thousand source, which was the, the mayor's budget, if I'm correct. Or destiny, yeah. But we weren't voting to decrease growth management. We were just really, that, the focus of that was destination rapid city. Yes. So just to be a little argumentative now, if I wanted to say I want the next item, I want to take council travel to 60,000 and I fund it from somewhere else, could I, could I do that? Yes. Okay. And if that motion passes, then and you're I don't see how we're going to get to the bottom of this list if that's the case. I mean, I, I don't. And, and I'm not going to do that because the council has said 20000 or 25 whatever. I mean, I wouldn't do that, but I, I don't know how we get to the bottom of the list if every time we vote on something, we take it out and we can put it back in by another motion. I don't know how we get to the bottom. And I, I don't know how to answer that except it is a different motion, but Bill Krepke, please. Thank you very much. I'm looking at this. So right now, we are $212,173. Still available. Still available. Well, it seems to me that if we, if we don't touch the, uh, the uh, delay the pay grades, we're within just a couple bucks, right? Right. And so, I mean, we're almost there, I think, right? unless we want to talk about additional travel monies. Right, and other things. Uh, so we're going to go so through the list at this point. So <laughs> unless there's a different motion that you want to Are we going to talk CPI about the, the are we going to talk about the, the wages right now? Is we, that the next time <coughs> we're putting delay grades 22 and above pay scale. So that would be ne next. That's the next one. Okay, I'll week after that. Thank you, sir. Um, the council again the travel budget was 25000 That did pass. The delay on grades 22 and above pay scale is next. That was the motion. That passed, the 25000 Oh, I'm sorry. I, you're right. Sorry, I'm getting a little tired. Um, we went back to growth management. I apologize. I, there was a lot of discussion. We met back that the 28000 from growth management would come from CPI. Thank you, Sam. And that was the motion and seconded. The motion was made by Ron, seconded by Lloyd. Um, any discussion on that motion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Aye. Roll call.
Okay. Jackie, roll call, please. Okrepke? Yes or no? <laughs> so if I vote yes, we're putting... So if, we, if I vote that yes, we're putting how much? Twenty eight. Twenty eight thousand dollars into that, and that's going to come out of the CPI from someplace. From the CPI. Okay. Puts it back on the list. So your vote is what, Mr. Okrepke? We have a motion on the floor. I'll defer to I'll confer if I can. We're taking a roll call vote, Bill. No. Thank you, Bill. Chapman. No. Weifenbach? Aye. Olson? I just left the room. Can you tell me what the motion is? Guys, we need to start speaking into our mics. Sorry. Repeat the motion. Increasing growth management budget $28,000 for wages and taking that amount from the CPI. Uh, yes. Roger. Aye. Quaker. No. LaCroix. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Hadcock. No. That motion carries. Okay. And we've taken that amount from the CPI, and that's our total. Okay, thank you. Next is delay grades 22 and above pay scale. Is there a motion on the floor? Sam Quaker. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, what I'm proposing, and I already talked about the, re the reasons uh, why, uh, there are there is a seven and a half percent pay increase scheduled for 22 and above. I believe that the um, it isn't as urgent to put those in all three steps in place. Each step is slightly more than two and a half percent. So I I believe that it is appropriate to implement one step in January of 09 and delay the other two steps until uh, 2010. Now when I offer when I offer my motion. Um, am I being requested then to allocate those funds? Is that what the request is? That is that how we need to structure this? No. No. So um, my motion is to um, proceed with implementation of one step in January of 2009 for pay grades 22 and above, and delay the other two steps until the 2010 budget process. Is there a second on the motion? I'll second the motion to, for discussion. Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I think there's some complications with this motion if we're going to start just without having all the information on the table. Um, I think the last time we met, I heard that you can't just take apart pieces of the pay matrix. We then have to look at the entire pay matrix. I'm not sure how that impacts others. Um, when I joined the council, uh, I think we just started to implement some of the wages at, um, at some of the earlier stages of the, the pay scale with the understanding that those that were in, at department head levels or 21 and above or 22 and above waited. They had to wait until those other ones were implemented and they waited. And now here we are near the latter part of that stage and we're gonna say no, we're going to still make you wait more. And then I think it's philosophically the wrong signal to send. If we're trying to attract people to come to our community, we're trying to grow our community, we should be finding ways to um, encourage people to want to work for the city. I don't know if that would, want, would encourage professionals um, at the department head level to want to come. One of the things I heard about something later on the agenda is that we made pledges. We made a pledge to Black Hills Vision to do $75,000 a year for five years. Well, we made pledges to our department heads to pay them and to pay them fair wages, and that was the deal then. So now we can say no. I, I, I think not. I, I think this is a bad idea, and I would like someone from finance to say how delaying this or not doing it at all impacts the rest of the pay scale and everyone else who works for the city. 
Counsel, I don't think it's just in a vacuum. Do you vacuum. have a substitute motion? I don't. I want to hear an answer to my question. Thank you. Pauline, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I am not 100% familiar with the way that the pay matrix works, so if there's another department head that um, can help me if I say something incorrect, please do so. It is my understanding that by Sam's motion, it's not changing the pay matrix that was approved. What is changing is how that pay matrix is implemented for the steps or the grades 22 and higher. So instead of getting the two steps in January and the one step in July, grades 22 and higher would only get the one step in January as the rest of the employees at grade 21 and lower also get. It w the actual pay matrix itself would not change. It would just take longer to get to where they technically should be by the, what the council had approved prior. Thank you. You have a follow-up, Mr. Chapman? I do. I understand. So what Sam has proposed then is under the overall guidelines of the pay matrix, he's just shifting some things around in there and not necessarily changing the pay matrix. So it's no need to worry about if we need to do other things for some of the other pay grades. That, that's what I think I heard. As, as far as I know, that is correct. Jason, you may know better than I. Jason Green, do you have a comment, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. As I understand the motion, it is simply to delay the extra steps that are proposed for all of the employees' grades 22 and above, and that includes more than just your 11 department directors. I think there are 70-some employees that fall within that category. The only thing I would add is that this hasn't been a four-year process. It's been an eight-year process. You've got to go back to the first Condry study. Thank you, Jason. Malcolm, do you have a follow-up? I, I do. I, I understand what Sam's doing. I think it, if the money, it, it seems as if the way the mayor structured the budget, the money is there to pay those grades, so I don't know why we're looking for delaying them if the money is there. I have a substitute motion that we leave the pay grades as they are, and my substitute motion would also say that we take the money that the council was given last year in terms of technology allowance, which is $100 a month, um, which is $1,000, I guess, a month total, $12,000 a year, and we take that away from the council and we put that into the budget somewhere. That's my motion. Second. Discussion on that motion. Lay, leave the pay grades as they are, if I'm correct, and take that $100 um, that was allowed for technology and uh, put that back in the budget. And there was a second by Lloyd. Discussion, please. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay. Aye. Sorry, I didn't see you, Sam. And Sam and then Karen, please. Thank you. I'd like to ask clarification, um, Pauline. I, I believe that the spreadsheet that we were provided um, regarding uh, 2009, um, it is my understanding that there is not a pay increase scheduled for mayor and council for 2009 unless the council specifically authorizes um, for a 3% pay increase for mayor and council. Is that correct? That is correct. We do budget that amount in the budget so the, the funding is there should you guys approve it, but you do approve a resolution each year for your guys' raise. So unless there is a three, unless there is a motion to authorize a 3% pay increase for mayor and council, mayor and council pay will stay at the 2008 level. Is that correct? That is correct unless you pass okay. that resolution. Now, um, and, and I believe that this is the substance of the motion. I'd like to ask, if the mayor doesn't mind, I'd like to ask him a question. Um, on July 27 or 28, when, um, when I had asked what the increase was for the department heads for 2009, your answer was 3% came back the next day and corrected that. Were you aware at the time that you wrote the budget that it was three steps or seven and a half percent rather than three? Madam Chair. Is it okay if I ask the, the, that? Yeah, absolutely. The answer is yes, I did know that. Um, when you ask a question off the cuff, typically uh, we were looking at basically 3% increases. So having gone back and, and talked, as soon as I answered the question, went back and talked with staff, 
Uh, we, we talked about that, and, and they reminded me of the 22 and above that we're going to get the additional increase. And so I think I corrected that almost immediately, but no. Um, when the budget was prepared, please keep something in mind. When the budget is prepared, typically um, the budget numbers for salaries are provided by the finance department. And the reason is, is because it's a city council through their policies that actually step, uh, establishes salaries. The mayor does not establish salaries. You guys adopt the pay matrix. You passed a resolution about eight years ago basically putting into place the, the, the uh, mechanism we have right now. And so, quite honestly, when, when I go through the, the budget, those are figured in, those numbers come from the finance office and, and none of the line items for salary other than the couple that when we shift the FTEs around, those were not changed other than the numbers uh, from when they came from, from finance. So. I hope that answered your question. I know that's a little bit long, yeah. but you know, I I understand what what uh, Malcolm is doing, and I would support a standalone motion to end the technology allowance. But I think that's substantially different than than the uh, than the the salaries themselves. We're really talking about allowances versus salaries, and I I guess uh, um, the the, mo the uh, Malcolm's motion. Uh, one part of it is good and the other part of it is not. And so for that reason, uh, I would um, oppose it on those grounds. But I would again ask the council to please take a look at these these numbers and in light of the problems that the uh, school district is experiencing, it is only fair to, to take a real um, real close look at this. And I don't want to be painted as um, uh, anti-employee or anti-personnel. I am, I am still suggesting that we give a um, uh, an increase next year, but no other organization that I'm aware of is able to afford seven and a half percent for 2009. Thank, Thank you. you. Alan Hanks, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and this is going to be a little bit interesting in all these places. Um, I'm, I'm trying to understand the relationship okay. between the school district and the city council's budget. To me, there's no correlation whatsoever. I, I, Sam, I apologize. I, I don't understand why you keep bringing up the school situation when that has nothing to do with the city council budget. The other thing is, and I, I think I need to point this up, first of all, keep in mind, whatever you do with salaries, quite honestly, it impacts, doesn't impact me, it's already been established here. It impacts 72 employees. All too often, everyone keeps talking about department heads, department heads, department heads. The reality of it is it's 72 of your professional folks that provide professional services to the city. They're the engineers, they're the attorneys, they're the finance folks. It's all the professional folks you have down here. And I find it just a little bit ironic, and I'm, I'm gonna be very blunt when I say this, I find it very ironic that we seem to be more worried about taking, not living up to our obligations to the employees. I'll just lay it out there. Taking, basically backing away from the obligation we made to our employees eight years ago to bring them to the midpoint of the study. And so what we're proposing to do is take the raises that they were counting on, that, that we, there again, obligated ourselves to, told them we were going to give them, and turn around and, and these are all wonderful organizations up here, but you're putting a lot of these programs ahead of your city employees. You're talking about non-city functions and you're saying, let's put all the money in here and let's in essence, uh, let's not worry about the obligation that we made to our city employees eight years ago to get them to that midpoint. I, just, I find that, well, the, I think there's been an awful lot of leeway given on this discussion, so I'm gonna, take the, I'm gonna take that leeway because I think it's absolutely unforgivable to take money away from your employees that, that you had obligated and basically uh, made that commitment to eight years ago and then turn around and start funding non-city functions. There again, my philosophy, and I'll repeat it, my philosophy is very simple, is the fact that there's the must-dos, the should-dos, and the like-to-dos. And guess what? We're starting to do a lot of like-to-dos, and we're taking it from the should-dos and the must-dos. And philosophically, you're basically taking money out of the employees of the pockets to fund non-city functions. 
And I have a real philosophical problem with that. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Thanks. Um, just one question. On August 4th, 2008, which is not too long ago, we did a resolution to amend the City of Rapid City's comp compensation plan by adding position of different positions. And if I'm correct, Pauline, we had different 22s, 24s, and different things that we all decided that they should get more money. And now we're saying, and, and, and I don't know if everybody approved this, because I, I didn't get the final thing, but I'm pretty sure everybody on this council approved it. So now we're arguing to go back after something we approved August 4th and say, okay, I think we shouldn't do this now. And this has different ones, not just 22s, but it has a bunch of 22, 24s and different things. So if we change this, so what does that do, Pauline, to this compensation plan? I mean, this, this plan that we just approved as a council. Do we have to go back and void this and, and do it again? Or what, what happens after that? Those would still stand, but they, if they got moved from a grade that was under 22, and they were thinking that, okay, now I'm moved to a grade 22 or higher, I'm gonna get three steps next year, that's not gonna happen if Sam's motion passes. Okay, so that compensation that we just approved as a council, it would just change the whole plan, what we did. This would affect those this. employees as well. Thank you. Um, sorry, Ron Weifenbach, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your philosophical argument. It's it's a good one. It's it's, uh, it's a good point. I'd like to make a motion to uh, fund the salaries for the as as listed. Okay, that's a, and, that's a substitute okay. motion. That'd be a. Let me see. We have. Sam, if I'm correct, Jackie, then we have um, Malcolm's, which we have, and then we have a second substitute would be Ron Weifenbach, just as is, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. Removing the, the, the technological whatever, I think that's a, a ploy that I don't, a road I don't want to go down. I think that. All right. Is there a second on that second. motion? Um, motion made by Mr. Weifenbach and seconded by Ms. Olson. Discussion on that motion. Ron Kroger, please. Probably not discussion, but a question for somebody. Uh, on the Condry plan, I, it's been going for eight years, and I can't remember what all it entailed. But my question is, is you know, the information we got on salaries, uh, department heads and stuff have basically received a 7% pay increase every year. If we go with this, uh, motion on the floor I guess what are their pay increase schedule for next year I, I, I know it's all per individual but uh, you know if you take five years at, at close to seven percent that's 30 30 percent pay increase uh, is it going to be seven percent next year again and what 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 do our lower grades get I guess on a yearly basis I'd like to know that too Ron, Alan Hanks has the answer. I, th I think if, I can answer that. Alan, just, just a sec. Yep. Make sure we're speaking into the mics, guys, because they're, they're not hearing you and they've told me to speak. In just so you know, this, this, this <laughs> That's is... That's the plan, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is the eighth year of implementation of the approved pay increases. The 22 and above did not get the additional increases during the first four years. Uh, they were not froze, they got, I believe, one step, if I'm not mistaken. They got a 2.5%. But what was, what, we did not have enough money to bring everybody up to the midpoint. So everybody 21 and below got increases. They got their, their step, plus they got additional steps to get their wages up. Then the 22 and aboves in the second four years were given their increases to bring everybody up to what we call the midpoint. Now, just to answer your question, this is the last year of implementation of this plan. After the 2009 budget in 2010, everybody goes back to exactly the same with the caveat 
that in 2010, we go back into union negotiations in 2009 for 2010. But all things being equal, this is the last year of the implementation. This would be the last year that the 22 and aboves would get additional steps. I, I guess my question to you, Mayor, I, I don't know how we've done this in the past, but I mean, on a yearly basis, after we've got to mid-grade on everybody, what do we look at? Do we look at a 3% across the board <laughs> increase for everyone, or 1%, or do we divide it up, or what do we do? To, go ahead, uh, Pauline, I think it's 2.5, isn't it? That is part of the Condry study that he just completed that we have not implemented and that has not been made public yet because that was, that was going to be part of the negotiations for the, the new union contracts and it's, still draft, yeah. and it's still in a draft form. But that's why we hired, hired Condries to come back is because part of the, the original study was we were going to have him come back and look at it to see if there's any additional adjustments at the end of that, that period. And they just wrapped that up not that long ago. The, the goal was once we got through those eight years, the goal of that study was to get everybody to the midpoint so that everybody, uh, there would be very little adjustment in the next go around. The first go around, there was a lot of compression within the pay matrix. In other words, the folks at the, at the bottom of the scale, uh, you know, the nines, tens, elevens, those steps, were basically pretty close to the midpoint. It was the folks at the top the 22 and aboves that were quite a bit below the midpoint, and so that's why you're seeing the adjustments. But to answer your question, after the 2009 budget, everyone hopefully should be where they should, where they were uh, need to be on the pay matrix. Um, we have Bill Krepke, please. Thank you. Maybe Mayor, you can help with this. Uh, <clears throat> I know where Sam's going, and I can certainly appreciate where he's thinking. What happens if we delay the delay the implementation of this 7% six months to June or July or whatever it is? Uh, what would be the savings on that and what would be the impact? Um, I believe, I'm going to look to Pauline, each one of the steps is roughly about 150000 Am I close? Pauline, please. 115 I believe that... Jim Preston had actually asked Mary for that information some time ago, and I don't have that email with me. But I wanted to say that um, the number that was in the email was about $178,000, what the, the impact was. I have not added up these, but if they only got one increase instead of the three that are scheduled, that it would be about $178,000. Okay. But, but my question was is that what would be the impact, what would be the savings? Because right now what you're saying is, that if we give it to them on January 1st, it's going to increase 175000 Is that what I understand? Every, just so you know, there again, keep in mind, the salary line items within the budgets took into account the uh, approved pay plan by the city council. So everything budget, is budgeted in. Um, if you don't do anything with the resolution that's on the books, you're fine. The money is in the budget. I, I understand, but the, the question that I had, and maybe maybe I'm not communicating it very well. Uh, if if it's 170,000 additional monies, that's the seven percent, correct? No, that's only five. Well, isn't isn't why we isn't the deal or isn't the are we going at seven percent increase? All employees get a two and a half percent increase, mm -hmm. and then the 22 and above as far as the approved plan, was to give them an additional two steps to get them to the midpoint. Correct. So what would happen if we delayed that those two steps that we're talking about? They will probably never get them. I'll be very honest, and I'll tell you why, is the fact that if we delay it a year, we're into brand-new negotiations, and my guess is... Um, no, 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 Mayor, I, that's not what I was saying. If okay. We, if we give it to them, if we just delayed that six months to June... You'd save half the money. Roughly. And so you're talking 80000 85000 And what would the impact be? On morale or on the, on the budget? <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> on the morale of the, of the employees or on the budget? On the morale. On the morale? My guess is it would be devastating because I would, there again, this is my personal perception, my personal opinion is the fact that all those, those folks that were 22 and above that have been counting on those pay raises, that they've been promised for eight years are going to feel slighted and basically cheated 
the fact that uh, the council didn't live up to uh, the obligations they made going back eight years ago. I mean, I don't know how to put it any straighter, but I mean, the reality of it is, look at it, look at it, look at it this way. If it was your employer and you were hired and you were told that this is what you're going to make, this is basically what you can expect in, in, in raises. And some of these folks have been waiting eight years to get to the midpoint. And then all of a sudden somebody comes and says, you know what, we decided um, we're just not going to implement the final year or we're going to delay it even six months. Um, quite honestly, I, I think that uh, you would have an awful lot of frustrated folks and, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me. I'm not, and I'm not saying we'd lose anybody, but it would scare me that we'd probably lose a couple employees because they don't feel that they could, could trust the uh, city anymore to live up to their promises. Thank you. You have a follow-up, Bill? Well, I certainly appreciate that. You gotta, we should look at California, what's happening out there. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I think that's where Sam is, is, is thinking as well. So. It, but in all fairness, we're not California, and quite I, honestly, we don't have that kind of, of, of drastic uh, moves that we have to make within our budget. You have, and, and I'll repeat it again, in front of you, you have a balanced budget. You don't need to go back out and try and freeze wages. Thank you. Follow-up, Bill? Thanks. Ron, please. Thank you. I, one of the reasons I made the motion, on the, on the, I've been challenged to look at this and, and look at the percentages. and Unfortunately, the period of time that it's taken to get these people to where they're supposed to be it ends up that the percentages are huge this year or above normal or above the normal scale for wages throughout Rapid City percentage wise. Uh, but I also did some, some studying on the Condry study, the most recent Condry study that we had that talked about uh, the number of employees that each department had and in the end it summarized the dollar amount in reference to the dollar amount that they, they did the employee studies to. And if you figured those things out, we were uh, uh, pretty much right on with the levels and number of employees we had in almost every department. But dollar-wise, at the end, the dollar amount was always lower. So uh, that was my conclusion in, in, uh, in making the motion um, to move on. I think that th we do have, uh, my, my one year with the council, we have real professional people in these positions. Uh, the percentages seem high, yeah. I don't think that the people in the community in Rapid City probably have received those type of raises in 2009, but that, that's understandable. I know that uh, Wyoming just went through the same thing with their, with their employees. They were all like drastically below the, the, the pay scale that was uh, representing them. They made big changes over there in this last year. Um, but I felt compelled to, to give reasoning for my, my, my motion. And the reason would be is if you read the current Condry study and you look at the numbers of employees and then you compare it to the dollar total number of dollar volume that's going out from each one of those departments, you'll find that it is significantly below the averages that Condry calculated. So I, I, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Malcolm? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I support the motion on the floor to leave it as is. I, I, I guess I, I keep hearing we should not do it or we should delay it or we should delay it by year, and, and I still haven't gotten to an answer as to why. I, I, I don't know why we would do that. Why would we go and look for something to decrease the morale of our professional employees? I could understand if we couldn't balance the budget. I could understand if things were dire that we needed to do something like this and look at that level. I think you have that kind of conversation with um, these 72 employees and you, you, you cross that bridge. But we're looking to create problems where there's no problem. And I guess my question is simply why? Delay it for what reason? The money's there. We, the, it's been promised to them. Of course the percentages are going to be high when you take eight years worth of raises and compact them into four years worth of giving, earning. I guess I don't understand why. Okay, we do have a motion on the floor for no change. Um, any more discussion on that motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Um, one no with um, Sam Quaker. Any other no's? If not, Bill Krepke. Two no's, Jackie, Bill Krepke, and Sam Quaker. Thank you, Council. The time is getting late. Um, what is the... Um,
I'm even getting tired. I'm going home. <laughs> I'll make a motion. Thank you. I'll make a motion that the work that we've done today moves forward as it, I mean, with the, the motions that we approved so far tonight would move forward uh, and we would continue on the, on the spreadsheet um, the next meeting. Thank you. Um, discussion on that motion. I'd, I'd like to make a follow up on in making that motion in, in going with the mayor's philosophy. I would like to the council to challenge themselves to find a way to to remove the three hundred is it three hundred fifty thousand from other parts of the budget. Three thirty. No, the um. CPI. No, the whatever the total amount was that we just increased the wages. So it it's a direct reflection that we were willing to invest in our assets in the city and take. Okay, but I just just want to give you guys something to go away with. <laughs> the same amount that we increased. I mean, the, I can't explain it. He, the he things you need, the more, things you want. Make it more considered. We we passed. We just passed a motion for the things that we need. I, I say we take that same amount of money, three hundred and forty-five thousand or whatever that number was, and remove it from the things that we we want. Is that a motion? Instead of we need. I'm just kidding you. Yeah, but I, I just <laughs> challenge you guys when you come back because I'm going to probably make that motion. So. Thank you. Um, any other discussion, Council? If not, do we have a motion? We have a motion on the floor. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We will set a new Council.